Hello, everybody. Welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today is, what is today? Thursday, the 21st of March, 2019. It is the first day of spring. What else happened today? Levi's re-entered the stock market after 34 years or something like that. Whoopee! <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Um, today, I've got a computer repair to do for you. And uh, I'm already sweating. I haven't even started yet. Not sure that's a great way to start. But this always is. Hmm. Hello, everybody. Mick Ridgely says it was a good show yesterday, Mitch. Oh, is Mitch in there? I'm sorry. I haven't been paying attention. I've been running around trying to get the, trying to get the show started. Did Carrie get a haircut? No, I got them all cut. Ha ha! Hmm. At my age, I'm just glad I got hair to cut. We all can't have flowing manes of blonde hair like Mitch Morrison. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm too lazy to have to maintain that. That's for sure. It's all a wig. It's all just a wig, Mitch. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody. It's not a wig. <laughs> Whew. I've just been running, 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 running. I can't believe I made it close to on time. Blue Johnny says, even in chuckles, hey, that is, that is, that is only something Mitchell can call me. Mitchell, what's the status? Are you still getting 350 on that computer yesterday that we re, re, retuned up? Or, uh, or what? Or what? Or have you even taken it out of the car and plugged it in yet? Mitch was here till 10 o'clock at night. You guys need to understand, Mitch came here about uh, 10.45 in the morning, and he left nearly 12 hours later. Oh, 11 hours and 15 minutes to be precise. Although we did take a break and we did go to dinner. So that's, and we went for ice cream afterwards. We had a very nice date. Man, it's hot. I see Catherine Anna Hauserman's joining us. Hey, Catherine, always good to see you. Hmm. How's this microphone sound? I'm using the, uh, the cheap mic because I paid a lot of money for it. Does that make any sense? Ronald says, what a fantastic show yesterday. I haven't laughed so much in a long time. Nice, Ronald, thank you. That's the goal. We're trying to educate and entertain. I guess we're trying to edutain. Mitch, you know, sometimes you just, there's a chemistry between people. It's real easy with Mitch. Looks like I might, let me just check and see if I've missed any contributions that have come in. We're going to get started here pretty quickly. I just want to, this is my monologue. This is where I, I kind of take a breather. I'm getting ready to work. I mean, when you start your job, do you, do you clock in and immediately start working? Come on, are you kidding? Steven says, sound is good. Good, good. Thank you. Good to hear. It's the best this microphone has ever sounded. All I had to do was get a $2,500 4K camcorder to make the mic sound good. Now I know. Contributions. Tony Wallow contributed $1.99. He kicked us off with the first contribution about two hours before we started. Thank you, Tony. And Jim Desposito just contributed $2. And thank you to both of you guys. Stealth Mode said it was fun watching you and Mitch yesterday. It was fun. I had a good time, you know. Mitch is the best love his personality when he is with you. Yeah, I agree. His personality is just not good when he's not around me. Agreed. Come on, Mitch. What's taking you so long to respond, or did I not see it? I want to know. I want to know. Are you still getting a 350 maximum bandwidth on that machine or did what we do address it you know how his hard drives weren't showing up remember i said afterwards we would plug them in one at a time and i plugged them all into the the top six sata connectors which are all the intel controller and we popped them in one at a time and one at a time they appeared no problems whatsoever it, it, it was like well why did we do them one at a time so i think we were plugging into some controllers that just weren't friendly to some of those drives and really just just harped about getting rid of some of those drives. Hard drives are so cheap. Two terabyte drive is like 60 bucks. So pull the two one terabytes, replace it with a two, or get yourself a four, 
and replace the two and two ones, and now you've only got three hard drives instead of six, or you know, whatever. It's just, it's just simple. Hard drives are cheap, and you reduce your likelihood of a failure when you reduce how many parts can fail. That's just a very simplistic uh, view of it. And somebody who said that um, that the whole thing was a waste of time, but and, I, and it bothers me. It really bothers me, as you can tell. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know, when you take your car to get an oil change, is that a waste of time because the car doesn't come back any better? Right? What you're doing is called preventive maintenance, and some people just don't get that. You can be reactive, which means your computer's going to break when it wants to, which, according to Murphy's Law, is that it's going to happen at the worst possible time. Or you can be proactive, meaning that you can do preventive maintenance, there's another word called preventative maintenance. It means the same thing, but it's an ugly word. Preventative. 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 Preventive. It's just easy. Preventive maintenance. Now, it doesn't guarantee you're not going to have a problem any more than getting the oil changed in your car. doesn't guarantee your engine's not going to seize up. But you pay good money and you wait. Most of us wait in the dealer's you know, waiting room or the service area of wherever you get your oil changed half an hour to an hour and a half will they do that maintenance. You get your car back, and despite your wallet being a little lighter and a little bit of your time is gone, the car doesn't run any differently. So you have to understand what preventive maintenance, why we do it, and it's one of the things I force on my clients who are retainer clients, because retainer clients, they pay me a fixed amount. So the more I have to go over there and address problems, the less money I make. So I force the clients to let me do what I need to do to all the systems, whether they think they need it or not, since I'm the one they're going to call if they don't work. And if I do the job right, I should be making more money and spending less time. But people who want to wait until they have a problem and then react to it, those are often your most demanding customers who want to pay you the least and they want it fixed yesterday. And by then, so much has gone wrong. It's no longer a small fix. In most cases, they've been ignoring a little problem. Uh, I had a lady bring me, a, just for example, I had a lady bring me a computer once, and she said it doesn't work anymore, and it's been, it's been in trouble for like a year. Uh, but she's still able to use it. So I, I said, well, yeah, bring it over, and I looked at it. And as soon as I turn it on, it says hard drive one failed, hard drive two failed. And it was an arrayed one array, meaning that one hard drive mirrors the other one at all times. It's like the second one is invisible and it's there to take over if the first one fails. Well, apparently what she meant when she said it's been doing this a long time, I said, you know, it says you get this message on the screen. She goes, yeah, it's been saying that. I go, so it was telling you the first drive had failed, or one of the two drives had failed, and it was now relying on the other one. And so since the system still continued to boot into Windows and she had work to do, she just kept using the system until the system wouldn't work anymore. And I said, I do not have good news for you. The system warned you that the first drive failed. You ignored it. Now the second drive has failed. All your data is gone. Everything is gone. We can send the drives in for data recovery. You're looking around $1,200 and it'll take a couple weeks and there's no guarantee of what we can get back. Clearly, somebody like this doesn't have that kind of uh, fundage available to them, and they weren't happy with the call, and I wasn't happy, because this could have been a very easy problem to fix. If she would have called the minute she got the problem, the very minute she got the problem, she should have picked up the phone and been proactive. I'd have said, that's a real easy fix. We'll just get another hard drive the same size or larger than the one that failed. We slide the old one out, we pop the new one in, we plug it in, we turn it on, it automatically mirrors, you're back in business. When it happens again, call me again. If you want to prevent it from happening again anytime soon, let me replace them both at the same time. In that case, you replace one, let it mirror, it takes a couple hours, right? And then when it's done mirroring, take the old one out, put the other new one in and let it mirror that again off the new one. You know, yeah, it's going to cost twice as much for the drive but because you're getting two drives, but now you're good for another five years or whatever. So again, if people made backups, this would be irrelevant anyway. And of course you didn't have backups. And anyway, proactive, reactive. I'm not interested in being, uh, having customers that are reactive unless they're going to pay me really, really well. And they usually, 
It, it seems to go hand in hand. The people who don't have any money, that's their excuse. They say they don't have any money. There's a difference between people who actually don't have money and people who say they don't have money. And that's the excuse on why they let it get so bad so that it would cost more. It, it just doesn't. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, was I back on my high horse again? A couple more contributions have come in. Let's uh, say some thanks to Niles McLeod, contributed five euro. He says, keep up the great content. Learned a lot from you over the years. Thank you, Niles. Christoph Esch, who watches us from Germany, has contributed to five euro. He says, now you have a number of power extensions in stock. Oh, no, I sent those all home with Mitch. I don't want any of that. All I kept was those fans, because I'll give those to somebody at some point. Somebody will have a bad fan. I'll go, here, have it. It's used. I don't know how long it'll last, but if you don't like it, you can get a refund. And the, uh, the Hyper 212 Evo, which, you know, I'll need to replace the brackets, but they always come with a spare set of brackets, the Hyper 212. So I will use it. It'll, you know, the heat sink never gets old and the fan is fine. And I still have a lot of thermal compound that Mitch left with me, plus the thermal compound that we didn't use in the, in the Muggin 5 or the Mugen 5 that we installed. So yeah, that's, and, and then we ended up using a piece of packing tape to keep the side panel closed. And um, Mitch actually likes the look of it. Mitch was like, this looks like it's got a little battle scar. You know, he, I, I was like, all right, I'll go with it if you want to go with it. So I, I just didn't want it to pop open on the, in the car on the ride home. <clears throat> so anyway, um, what else do we have here in the contributions? Steve Caruso has contributed $10. Thank you, Steve. He says, fun times watching you and Mitch yesterday. It was not a waste of time and quite hilarious in a good way. Thank you, Steve. Kevin Sears also contributed $10. He says, hello, everyone. I agree, yesterday was hilarious. You guys, hilarious. You guys have a wonderful sense of humor, I can tell you that. You know, it was, uh, I hope you got the lessons out of it and they weren't just boring lectures. That's not what I want to do here. I want to keep it entertaining, but also keep the educational content in there. Mitch says he ordered a new side panel last night. He didn't even need the whole side panel. He just needed that little clip, but okay. What did that cost you? Andre Hernandez has contributed $4.99. Thank you to Andre. And Stephen Barber contributed $2. He says, did you find that VPN thing? Oh, we found it and we installed it. That's why I was curious what Mitch, if Mitch has had taken the time to run the speed test on it to see if it's changed anything. And I don't see Mitch responding to that, which means he either responded and I didn't see it. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Bear with, bear with. No, are you intentionally not answering me, Mitchell? I'm gonna start calling you Mitchell. You know when your parents are mad at you. Right. right. Now it doesn't appear that he responded to that. I I gotta know. I gotta know, Mitch. You can't do this to me, man. You can't just leave me in the dark, wondering if that made any difference at all. It's only fifteen dollars plus shipping. That's great. Bill Leatherland says, "Excellent show yesterday." Hey, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. And. Let's see, send out a search party for Mitch. Magni Johansson's contributed 44 Norwegian Krona. Long time. Good to see you. Thank you, Manny. Good to see you, too. Mitchell says he's still at a 350 download. All right, well, I was, I was hopeful. I guess I got to silence my phone. I hear it back here ringing. Let me turn that off so we don't get interrupted by that anymore today. Oh, let's take a look. I was in such a hurry. I completely forgot to silence or... <clears throat> I have to give you guys a piece of advice. And I'm telling you guys, if you trust me on this, your life will change. Take your phone, go into your settings, and under uh, sounds and vibration here on an Android, there's an option that says, do not disturb. Where is it? Right at the bottom, do not disturb. You turn that on. Now listen to what I'm saying. When this thing beeps, you're like a dog. Most of you, you're like a dog that hears the dinner bell. You jump to it like a trained animal, like a slave to this. You behave like an unthinking robotic slave 
when this beeps or vibrates or gives you any indication, what are you doing? You take your eyes off the road, you interrupt dinner conversations with family and friends. Put this on do not disturb and keep it there. Now you can have favorites. You know, you can have your loved ones be able to get through. You can say, okay, except for the people on my favorites list, they can still get through. But if the people that you love are really calling you a lot, take them off your favorites list. And then when you have a minute, just look at your phone, turn it on and see what you've missed. They will wait for you to respond. You don't have to respond right away. Make them Look, if you respond to them right away or you respond to them an hour or two hours from now, it's all good. If you want to check it every 15 minutes, check it every 15 minutes. But don't let that thing beep every 45 seconds. It's driving everybody around you crazy, and it seems like you're more interested in this than you are in with them. Like, you'd rather be wherever these people are than you are right now, and that's a terrible message. And I will tell you, if you try this for one day, you will love it. It's a big weight off your shoulders wondering, when am I going to be attacked? When is that thing going to beep? You're doing that. Most of you are doing that right now, and you don't even realize you're doing it. Like Inspector Clouseau walks in. He doesn't know when he's going to get attacked in his apartment. <laughs> so put Do Not Disturb on and check your phone when you want to check your phone. Take control and be in the moment. Be here with the people you're with. And if you're bored and lonely and you got nothing else better to do, fine. But when it's interrupting other people around you, when it makes, you're sending a message, and I can't emphasize this enough, you're sending a message that whatever this is right now is more important than what the person you're with or the people you're with. It's empowering. Feel the power and put on Do Not Disturb. And you check the phone when you want to check the phone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me tell you a little story about a man named Jed. He was a, a poor mountaineer. He barely kept his family fed. No, oh, that's the wrong story. I'm sorry. The story is a, is a man named Brady. No. I remember. This is a story of a guy named Crazy Vera. And Crazy Vera was doing some voluntary video editing for me. And I found out he was doing it on a Penny MD with two gigs of RAM. And he's editing four hour videos down into 90 minutes for people who don't like these marathon, you know, sessions of, well, basically it's just me turning a camera on while I'm at work, right? So when you take out all this, whatever we're doing right now, whatever you call this, and you just get right to the work, well, Crazy Vera's doing it, my sister's doing it. I create more content than editors can edit. Seriously, I would need an editor for every day of the week. And it would keep you busy for the whole week to edit that one day's video. So I need five editors <laughs> if I only work five days a week. I got two, sort of. Uh, my sister edits part-time. Crazy Vera edits part-time. So they do it when they want to do it, when, as time permits, because it's kind of a project of passion. It's not much money in it, because I, I can't give you much if I'm not making money. Anyway, so Crazy Vera gets this machine. Now, this was a machine that was... Uh, the motherboard was sent to me, I can't think of the gentleman's name, but it's an X99 board. They didn't like it. They had the Corsair Dominator RAM. One of the RAM modules was bad. So I just left two RAM modules in it and sent it back to Corsair. I sent two RAM modules. They said, can I just get these two replaced? Corsair said, no, you have to replace all four. I said, well, I don't want all four. I'm going to just break it into two, there's four sticks of eight, right? So just send me two sticks of eight, I'm fine. And they, they, can I just send you the one that's bad? And they said, well, we need at least two, because it's a kit. I said, great, I'll send you two. I'll put the other two that work here so I can get, because Crazy Vera was waiting a while on the system. Okay. So Corsair gets the RAM and they say, you didn't send us all the RAM, we only have two sticks. I'm like, yeah, if you look in the thread of the support message, you'll see we discussed this. And they said, well, we don't have I'm sorry, I'm looking for something in my office to show you. They say, we don't have the, the RAM in stock. I was like, I don't, okay. I'm trying to, I don't know where I put stuff now. I'm losing my mind. 
Uh, Carrie, you lost your mind a long time ago. What did I do with it? What did I, how could I have possibly... <sighs> All right. This is really bizarre. Where did I put it? All right. Well, anyway, anyway, I, I've got it around here somewhere. I said to Corsair, I go, look, I don't need to have the Dominator Ram. Send me some vengeance. You know, I don't need that high dollar stuff. Just give me two sticks of eight. I don't care. I'll use it. And they, they didn't, they said, okay. And, and I got a package in the mail a couple days later I had to sign for. And in it is a box about this big with four sticks of eight gigs of Dominator RAM, a full 32 gig kit, even though I only sent them two. And I said, you can send me back the cheaper Vengeance. I don't need the Dominator. And I've never seen a box this big that has RAM in it. And I don't know where I put it, but I thought how cool of Corsair. I don't know if that was intentional or if it was a mistake, but I appreciate that. I mean, it was very kind of them. And I'm just trying to figure out where I put it. Cause it, I have a place on my shelf back here for RAM and it's not, there, which means, which means I did not put it where it belongs. Oh, that's right in front of my face. I did put it where it belongs. Okay, so to reiterate, I sent Corsair two sticks of a four stick kit, two sticks of eight. And they said, and I, and I told them, I said, two sticks work. I'm going to put that in a different system. They said, we really need the whole kit to make sure they're all compatible with each other. I said, I don't care if they're compatible with each other. Two are going in one system, two are going in another system. They said, okay. So I said, can I just send you the one? And they said, no, you got to send it at least in a pair. I sent them the pair and then they said, oh, you didn't send us all four. And I'm like, well, you're not the same person I've been having the conversation with. And as you converse online in a trouble ticket, you can read the thread. I said, please read the thread. And they said, well, we're out of stock. And I said, you know, again, I don't care. Just send me two sticks of eight. I don't care. And then I got this. Is that the biggest box of RAM you've ever seen? I mean, I don't even know what this is. What are these different, different color? Oh, oh, it's a heat sink. It's a big heat sink. I see a fan in there. Holy moly. They just sent it to me. You know how much this is worth? So you're going to ask me if I like Corsair? Yes, I like Corsair. Does that make me a Corsair shill? No, it means Corsair's got amazing customer service. Again, I don't know if it's a mistake or intentional. I'm going to assume it's intentional that they said, hey, he's a nice guy. He talks good about us. Maybe, maybe they know who I am. I don't know. I ain't complaining about this. I got lots of things to complain about, but Corsair warranty and customer support ain't one of them. How cool is that? So you want to know why I buy Corsair? That's why. And if they keep treating me like that, I'm going to keep talking good about them. Same goes with you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. No, you're cool. I'm talking about that guy right there. Where's my Coke? I'm losing everything. <sighs> All right. Florian Gruria says, that's cool RAM. Get it? Hey, you leave the jokes to me. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Mitch Morrison still getting 350 on that computer. That's bugging me. Johnny Craig contributed $5. Awesome channel. Extremely informative. Best ever. Thank you, Johnny. Flattery will get you everywhere. Moderator status for Johnny Craig, my friend. Thank you. That was long overdue, Johnny. I apologize. That was long overdue. Anyway. So back to where I was a half an hour ago. Crazy Vera gets the machine. Works great for a week. Then he says it won't turn on anymore. I say, well, maybe bad power supply. I mean, it all worked. It all worked. They're used parts, you know, but I don't like to deal with used parts for this reason. I don't have any warranty. I don't have any 
spare X99 boards laying around, and they're very expensive. Crazy Vera thinks the board went bad, but boards just don't go bad typically. Like, I don't know, did Crazy Vera open it up and start messing around on the inside and doing stuff he shouldn't have done? No idea. Did it just happen? No idea. I know I sent him a working computer. It arrived in working condition, and it worked for a week. I'm not going to blame the customer. I would assume a customer would be honest if they said, hey, man, I was in there, and I was tweaking around with some stuff. And I mean, if that's, I, I appreciate that. When customers are honest, it helps me. Assuming he's being 100, you know, that he's not holding back on me. I'm not calling anybody a liar, but sometimes people, customers, they kind of uh, gloss over some stuff. But I'm going, to, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because there's no sense not to, right? There's no reason to suggest that there's any history of this. And why would he do that to himself, right? Why would he, why would he, doesn't make any sense. Doesn't mean that he didn't. But we're going we're gonna to give him something that people don't really use much these days. And it's called the benefit of the doubt. Furthermore, Crazy Vera has been helping me out, so I want to help him back out. But I thought I was done. Like, I thought after building it and paying to ship it that we were square. Now I'm going to have to fix it and pay to ship it again. But whatever, whatever. Your contributions, you guys have been very generous lately. You know where your money's going, right? And then Crazy Vera, even while he had it, he edited a video in the short time that he had it. So... And I told Crazy Vera, I said, you don't have to do any more editing. You don't owe me a thing. This is just for what you've already done. And by the way, if you want to keep editing, <laughs> please do. But I don't want you to feel like you owe me anything. This is just how I show my gratitude. So I've had it in a box this week. I haven't had time to look at it. And poor Crazy Vera's like, you know, when are you going to look at my machine? I said, Thursday. Today's Thursday. Now let's look at his machine. Let's see if it does what he says it does. First thing you always do is replicate the customer's problem. Or concern. Guy Stevens has contributed five pounds. Is it Guy or Guy? Hi, thanks, Kerry, for your videos and the tip for Windows 10 upgraded from Windows 7. I just did that for free and thank you from the UK. Well, you're very welcome and congratulations for getting out of Windows 7. You won't regret it. Windows 10 is so much better. So much better. <clears throat> John Feiner, I didn't do it. That's what they all say. A ask anybody in jail. They all say that too. Uh, House used to say all patients lie. Never believe the patient. They don't, they're not 100% honest. We see that a lot in the tech world. Now, Mike Smith and I were supposed to do a tech vets on Tuesday, and we're going to talk about, last Tuesday, we were going to talk about this very thing where the customer says, and then they tell you the problem, and then you find out it's an incredibly simple fix. Well, we're going to do that tonight, and we're going to air it live on YouTube, just like I did the Eli interview. We're going to do the same thing, and then we're going to rip the audio from that to put it up as a traditional podcast on TechBets. It's a different process for us. Mike is very particular over audio quality. So we've agreed this is all the show is going to be about, just stories of customer says. Now, if you have any of those stories where the customer says something, that sounds really complex and it turns out to be something really stupid and simple, please mail it to me now. Send it to carry at tech-vets.com. C-A-R-E-Y. That's my name. C-A-R-E-Y. It's not Corey. It's not Gary. It's not Frank. It's not Susan. Carry. C-A-R-E-Y at tech, T-E-C-H, dash, which is the minus sign, right? The dash. Vets, as in veterans, V-E-T-S, dot com. And if you have a good story, I will read it on your behalf. Put whatever name you want me to say during the show. Some people like their privacy. Uh, some people like to hear their name. Uh, give you an example. Customer calls and says, I just got a video driver update and I have two monitors. And everything that was on this monitor is now on this monitor and vice versa. Now, I know there's a way to go in the Windows Control Panel and Display, Settings, Advanced. Isn't there somewhere you move the monitors? I go, here's what you do. You pick up the monitor on the right and you move it over to the left. And they said, yeah, but, but isn't there a way? I go, there is a way. 
but there's going to be a new driver every six or eight weeks and that driver is defaulting that cable that's plugged into that monitor is the first one and you're going to have to change it every single time you're going to call me so if you can't move the monitors then just unplug the input cables and switch them next call so if you have any stories like that like a friend of mine says uh one more he says the the F key on my keyboard, it, it, I have to really hit it hard. And then finally it works, and then I'll get like six or seven repeats of the letter F, and I have to backspace it. So it's really driving me crazy. I said, well, I'll take a look at it. Hey, it's long story short, he calls me back, he says, never mind. I said, well, what was it? I gotta know what it was. Apparently he was clipping his fingernails. One of his fingernails clippings went underneath the F key of his laptop. Was, was preventing the, it was something simple. Once he, once you take the keyboard or the laptop and you shake it and stuff falls out of it, you know, from the keyboard, suddenly the keys work again. So if you have any stories like that, customer says, <laughs> and then it's something really simple, we're going to do that, nothing but that, tonight on Tech Vets, which will be a video here. And we're going to, I'll have to end this podcast, uh, I'm going to have to end this broadcast at a little after, well, at about four o'clock my time, which is oh, two and a half hours from now. I don't have a lot of time. Then Mike and I have to get ready, get everything synchronized and working so we can go live and do that for as long as that is. Think I'm busy? Let's verify what Crazy Vera says. Now there is a video of this computer being built. It had to be over a month ago at this point. Um, he did ask me if he could remove the hard drive from within it. I can't remember if I installed one or if he put one in, but he has data on there. I'm like, yeah, take it out because a hard drive is one of those things that can break in shipping. It just adds to the cost of shipping. So remove the physical hard disk drive. That's fine. Leave the solid state drive in it so I have the operating system and I can verify everything's working. So it should look exactly like I sent it, and it does. It looks good. Corsair Dominator RAM is still where I left it, so I don't think he's done anything to it. But he, apparently he took the solid state drive out when I asked him not to. Oh boy. Maybe, maybe. Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. I apologize. There's a, uh, we put a there's an M2 drive down here. He's good. He's fine. You're fine, man. It's good. Ignore me. I'm an idiot. Look, I even I even signed his. All right, it's good. You got the date on it. 10th of February. Whew. Working up a sweat. 1,215 people are watching. Hey guys, welcome in. Welcome in. Everybody friendly and supportive is welcome in here. If you're new here, real simple rule. Be nice. If you got nothing nice to say, don't say anything. Even if you're a mean, nasty person, we'll never know if you don't, you know, resist that impulse control to be a jerk. If you are nice, if you are supportive, I would love to turn you blue. See all these people in blue? These are all supportive and friendly people. I want all 1,215 of you to be blue. Please let me make you blue. Just don't be a jerk. If you, if you have the, if it's within you to be like, you did that wrong. You used the wrong video card. I'm going to boot you out of here so fast, and you won't be eligible for any of the giveaways. And more importantly, you won't be a part of this amazing, exclusive, positive community that we're building here. And you can say, I was there when the community was only this big, and now this community is huge. And I would love for you to be able to say that. I want this community to grow. It's so rare to find on the internet people that are kind and supportive, and it takes this much effort, and it feels amazing. Somebody says they built a computer, and you don't think those parts are a good match? Keep your mouth shut. Don't say that. Say, hey, you built your first computer. You should be proud of yourself. That's what you need to say. Say what you want to hear if it was you, and you were proud of your rig, and you did the best you could with the money you had, and it works because they did something. You understand? They didn't just sit there and watch a video. 
they took the risk, they took the chance, and they succeeded. And you should say to them, well done. And if you can't do that, then don't say anything, and I will love you forever. <laughs> it's really easy. 10 euros have been contributed by Dimitri. He says, hello, everyone. Great channel. Carrie, I did learn a lot from it. Thank you, Dimitri. Let's make you a moderator as well. All right, let me get started. Didn't he say that 40 minutes ago? Relax. Relax. I'm a passionate man. Where's your passion? Why, why everybody, why everybody got to be in a hurry all the time to just get to the punchline? Let the jokes and let, the, let it simmer, you know? This ain't an instant pot. You know, they got, they got, they got minute rice for the microwave oven. Like minute rice wasn't fast enough. They got to make it for the microwave. Slow down. Take a breath. Release. Just hang out, man. Just hang out. I think I did that more for me than for you. <laughs> Sometimes I say the things I need to hear. And I hope some of you out there, I get a sense some of you need to hear it too. But I think I'm really just doing it for me. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to get an HDMI cable out. We're going to hook this up. <laughs> What's he really drinking? I'm high on life, man. Every day is a blessing. Tomorrow is not guaranteed for any of us. The one thing you can never know is the day you die. You'll never know that. You'll never, ever know it. How do you know you're going to be here tomorrow? You're assuming it. I'm perfectly healthy. Boom! Hit by a truck. Plane falls out of the sky. Gone. In an instant. Carpe them diems. All right, keyboard mouse time. Liam Moss says, hey, Carrie, I'm a new subscriber from South Africa, and I really like the Coke in the background. <laughs> Thank you. Now I want some Coke. Yeah, I, it's pretty twisted, isn't it, that I pay Coke all this money to drink their beverage, and they don't give me a dime. But I like to keep everything on my channel real. Mistakes are real, they get made. It's not this highly polished, no mistakes, scripted. Everything's unscripted. It's all happening off the top of my head, I promise you. I have a piece of paper right here on my camera. This is my only script. I'll let you in on a little secret. That's a little reminder to me not to lose my cool. I'm trying. Sometimes people... Sometimes the trolls, they take it out of me, but I put that there just for me. And I think I'm gonna get another one that says smile to remind me to smile, right? Because the channel's growing and I should be leading by example. And sometimes I let my emotions get the better of me, but I'm working on it. JR has contributed $1. Hey, thank you, Jay. You know, all, all contributions, are, big or small, doesn't matter. I appreciate every one of them. Just think if I got a dollar from all 1,261 people watching today. Wouldn't that be cool? But anyway, let's do this. Uh, keyboard and mouse plugged in. Now, Crazy Vera says, system turns on but doesn't do anything. This is a, what I say it was, an X99, something or other. It's a uh, GeForce GTX 960 that was contributed by another viewer. So I took these parts that were contributed from other viewers and I put my own solid state drive in there and I put my own power supply in there and I used a brand new Corsair 200R case and a basic DVD RW drive. So my investment in this, even that was paid for basically by your contributions. Everything that you contribute goes either back into the channel or back into the community. Some people don't have the means to contribute financially, but you can all contribute by sharing the videos on your favorite social media platforms. Just copy and paste the links. Don't download my videos and repost them because that would be illegal. 
And that's a weird way of showing support. The other way you can show support is below my video, I always have parts lists pointing to Amazon and they point to Amazon because I make a small commission. That's the only affiliate link I have. I have no sponsors on the channel. You are the sponsors. I'd like to keep it that way. I already said there's only five companies I would accept sponsorship from. Acronis, A-Data, Levi's, Coke, and Scythe. In Scythe and Acronis, we're in talks. So we'll see where that goes. But in the meantime, they're products I use anyway, right? So I'm not a sellout, I'm not a shill. I hope I'm not. I really hope I'm not. And um, some people are always gonna think, they're all, some people are always gonna demonize and there's nothing I can do about that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you use the Amazon link in the video notes and it, takes you, and it takes you to Amazon, right? That's what the link does. But you don't buy, my dogs. But let's say, All right, boys. Thank you. Okay. Okay, there's nothing out there. It's just windy. Thank you. Good boys. You're doing a good job. You've earned a cookie. Come here, I'll give you a cookie. Probably shouldn't reward them. Then they're going to just bark for no reason. You want a cookie? Come over here. You got you to gotta, you gotta dance for me. There's Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy boy. Hi, buddy. No, no touchy. Good boy. You come over here. Sit. I didn't ask for that. What are you, petting him? You're a good boy with your goat ear. You're both good boys. I love you. Now get the hell out. Amazon links. If you click on, if you click on one of my links in my video notes, so below the video it'll say like read more or show more. That's where all the video notes are that discuss links, parts to things, whatever. In fact, if I say something in a video and I forget to post a link, leave a comment and remind me, and I'll add the link. I, I forget. I got a lot going on. All I'm trying to tell you <laughs> for the last five minutes. All I'm trying to say is, if you click on that link that takes you to Amazon, but you don't buy that product, but while you're there in that browser session, you buy something else from Amazon, I still make a small commission from it. It doesn't cost you anything any different. If you're shopping at Amazon and I'm not live, but you still want to support the channel, bookmark one of my Amazon links. And every time you go on to go to Amazon, use that bookmark. And if you buy something substantial or you're buying a lot of small things over time, let me know every time you do that because I will, if you're not blue, I'll turn you blue to thank you for supporting the channel. It costs you nothing. And this is for just people in the United States only at this time. All right. So I don't have Amazon affiliate links for Amazon UK or France or Canada. I did have them, but they're a pain in the butt to keep them up to date. And so anyway, for right now, it's just US. If you want to buy any of the merch, I did not want to sell merch. I've said I don't want to sell merch. Please sell me a t-shirt. Please sell me a coffee mug. Fine. So my sister has taken carryholzman.com and that stuff's available for sale over there. If you want to buy it, I ain't selling it. I'm doing it in protest. All right. Hmm. Also, one more thing. I know, for crying out loud. Two more things. I built a computer for a gentleman named Joe and his uh, girlfriend is into scrapbooking and she made me this. It's got my initials. Either that or this, or this goes on a faucet, cold and hot, I'm not sure. But look at, somebody, not somebody, she took the time to create this by hand. One of a kind, unique item, right? This means more than me than any amount of money. Somebody was thinking of me in a good way, which is weird. And it just said, thank you. 
and Catherine Anna Hauserman here. Catherine Anna Hauserman here, here over. Where is it? Over, over there in the chat. She makes the parts list. I asked her to help me make the parts list for this system, and they wanted to give her this thank you card. Is that a real butterfly? I don't know. I'm not touching it. And on the back for Catherine. Now that, oh, I will soak that up all day. So thank you to Joe and to Jen, not only for being a great customer, but for taking the time. That takes time. It takes thought, thoughtfulness, consideration, and kindness. And um, in this world that we live in today, I just don't see that very often. Now, hold on, I gotta get this other box ready because it's got, oh, address labels on it and stuff. And let me just peel the addresses off and I can show you. So one of the one of this one of the great members of this community sent me a box of old parts they don't want anymore. And they said, "Hey, I got a bunch of old stuff. I know you're giving away computers to disabled vets and people on fixed incomes. And is there a way I can? Would you use this stuff?" And I said, "Well, I don't know. What is it?" He said, "Well, I got a Samsung 850 Evo 500 gig drive." I said, "Yeah, I'll take that." He said, I got a two and a half inch to three and a half inch mounting bracket. I said, yep, I'll take that. He said, I got a couple of OWC, uh, a couple of OWC smaller size SSDs and uh, 120 gig uh, Neutron. I said, yeah, I'll take that. He said, oh, I also have uh, another Neutron GTX from Corsair, 240 gig. I said, yep, I'll take that. <laughs> he said, I got a couple of drive adapters to go from you know, because those Dells that I'm refurbishing, they uh, they they require a, a an adapter for the smaller drive to fit. I said, "Yeah, I'll take those." And then you think the conversation's done. He goes, "No, I also have. I've got an Aris uh, cable modem. This is a surfboard model 6190. I don't know why he sent that, but if you know somebody who needs a cable modem, let me know." Oh, I got uh, two terabyte Western Digital. I've got a one terabyte Western Digital Black. Another one terabyte Western Digital Black. Um, oh, this and this all go together. It's an EVGA GeForce GTX. something 680 680 looks like brand new so uh, this gentleman's name is Steve Steve thank you so much for sending the the stuff like he didn't need it he wasn't going to use it he said you know I, he's not giving it to me he's giving it to the community so you'll see this stuff appear in some of the giveaways coming up how cool is that? <laughs> what does this guy do? Fence? <laughs> I hope it's not stolen. I can't imagine it is. I mean, people that are hobbyists and enthusiasts, they go through hardware pretty quickly. You know, getting the latest and greatest is a tough game to keep up with because every six to eight weeks, something new, something bigger, faster has come out. And if you've got the money and the passion to support that hobby, what do you do with all your old parts? Well, if you've got older solid state drives, and you'd like to contribute to the community. Remember, it's, it's not going to me. I don't need any of this. I have no use for any of this. But there's many of you out there watching with old, outdated machines that are not only slow, but dangerous in the sense that you can lose your identity pretty easily because you're running an outdated operating system. So for that reason, we're doing these giveaways. We're focusing on our only, we're focusing on taking care of our own first. Do you understand? We want to make sure that we take care of each other and once enough time has passed that we've taken, I go, hey, I got a system and nobody needs it because everybody's like got something as good as or better than that. 
then we'll reach outside of the community and maybe use that as a way to draw more people in and give back. And the beauty of it is, I mean, that should be a loyal viewer. Like if I just give you a computer, you should be a loyal viewer of mine. I mean, wouldn't you be? Wouldn't you use that computer I sent you to watch my videos? I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, I would. So you guys make this community, right? All I'm doing, all I'm doing is encouraging it and rewarding the people who deserve to be rewarded, right? You come in here, you think you're smarter than everybody else, you got something to prove. Look, we don't care how smart you are. We don't care how smart you are. We don't care how fast you are. We care whether or not you're a jerk, right? Are you likable? We don't care what your gender is. We don't care where you're from. We don't care what language you speak. We don't care about your passion for Linux or Mac. We don't care. We care about if you're a nice person. It's really easy to be nice. And it's its own reward, but on top of that, you may also receive a reward. But I have to say, being an exclusive member of what is an essentially a pretty small community is a pretty cool freaking thing if you ask me. How many people around the world know about this? You do. Now, if you don't see the value in it, you can leave. But if you do see the value in it, I hope you tell your friendly friends and I hope you encourage others to join that are nice <laughs> and supportive people. And I hope that you get, like I said, I hope you get to say, I was a part of that community when, when he only had 1,300 viewers. There's some of you were like, I was a part of this community that told him he should go live. And he said he would never go live. How many of you were here when I said that numerous times? How many of you have been here that long? How does that feel, right? You guys are sort of already like, seniors <laughs> in the community and uh that's a pretty cool thing to be able to say you know that i i was i knew this before everybody else did right i was with this guy i saw it before other people saw it and um and, and again it's not my community it's ours without you without you and you and you and you and you and you it's just me talking to myself in the kitchen the only difference is now i turn a camera on <laughs> All right. <laughs> Those people just needed the credit, the shout out, because that stuff's been sitting here for over a week, and I try to jump on stuff as quick as possible. <clears throat> All right. A couple of more contributions came into the channel. Five dollars from Glyph. He says, hey, Carrie, I'm 14. I live in New York City. I recently built my own PC, and I want to say that you inspire me to want to pursue a computer technician career. Very good. Awesome. That's great. I had no idea what I was going to do when I was 14. Nikolai Lok Lokianov has contributed 50 pesos. Thank you, Nikolai. Mark Stevens has contributed a dollar, and Maruf contributed $2 and said, here's my dollar for today and yesterday. Right on, Maruf. And thank you, citizens. Citizen Perkins contributed a dollar. Night Owl has contributed 10 pounds and says, keep up the good work, Carrie. Thank you to Night Owl. David Ice contributed a dollar. And I think we're caught up for all those contributions right now. <sighs> 55 minutes ago, I said I was gonna turn this machine on and verify. <laughs> I'm gonna do it now. You see why it's so hard to be an editor for me? I forgot to put these back, hold on. Ah. Oh. Didn't he just say he was gonna? I didn't know those were there. Okay. okay, for real. For reals. Oh no, I forgot this one too. Okay, for real reels. Okay, for, 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 for real, real reels. Turning this thing on now. James Pappas has contributed $5. Thank you, James. Here we go, power on, power, power. Flip the switch on the back of the power supply. Let's go over here to the video input, which I think is number one. I'm up here in the corner. Let's turn this on. Okay, fan turns, rear fan. Rear fan is not turning. There's a problem. 
fan is running high speed, usually these systems will ramp up really loud. And then as soon as the BIOS comes on, they slow down. That's normal on these older systems. We've got diagnostic codes down here on the motherboard. It says zero, zero on the diagnostic code. Give the system a moment. We have no hard drive. Oh yeah, we do. I keep saying we have no hard drive. We do have a solid state drive in there. Isn't editing now post-production? All editing is, well, yes, there's really no editing happening in a live video. Not for me. Katie's Aura has contributed one pound. Thank you, Katie's. Thank you, Katie's Aura. And Randy Ruff has contributed $1.99. He says, hey, Carrie, love your show. Thank you, Randy. Swiss Skynet has contributed 10 CHF. He says, you need more Coca-Cola to stay hydrated. I gotta look up what CHF is. 10 CHF2 USD. Swiss francs. Oh, I don't know. I, I, oh, CH. The dot CH is Switzerland, isn't it? In the. That's uh, $10.08. It's almost dollar for dollar. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you so much. I'm learning all about new currencies. This thing ain't turning on. So it's exactly the way Crazy Vera said. Now, my first suspicion is the power supply. So we're gonna switch that out real quick. I got a brand new EBGA 600 watt power supply right here. And these are really inexpensive. So, you know, if it's bad, I kinda, look. This is not the best power supply you can buy. But I do believe it's the best power supply you can buy for the money. You understand the difference? That being said, they make these in such mass quantities because they sell so cheaply, you're probably more common to get a bad one. But they have a warranty. Unfortunately, the cost of shipping it back versus the cost of just buying another one when they go on sale might just not be worth repairing it. But we'll, or sending it under warranty, but we'll see. <clears throat> Frank Decker contributed $10. He says, Carrie's I, Carrie, I always enjoy your very educational show. Thank you, Frank. Ben DeCour, a frequent contributor and supporter here, contributed $4.99. I think that's Ben's regular. Thank you, Ben. Thanks. For, it's nice to know you're, you're regular. He says, hi, Carrie and chat. I hope everyone is doing well. Hey, we're regular. So that's always good. It's good to be, I'm going to drop that joke. Randy Harris contributed $10. Thank you, Randy. And I see Irving T, who is a familiar face from France. See, when I get to know where you're from, especially when it's exotic, then I feel like I'm just, I know you more than just by a name. I only have about 80 friend slots left on Facebook. I think Facebook lets you have 5,000 friends and I'm at like 4,920. So if you, if you're, it's nice to see that you guys' faces, you know? So if you have a real profile picture, and a real name on Facebook. I will approve your friend request. If you start emailing me stuff or private messaging me links and jokes, I'm gonna unfriend you because I'm flooded in messages. If you just wanna say whatever you wanna say and expect me just to say thumbs up or thank you, I will do that, but I can't engage. I don't have time to engage in a long conversation, but if you wanna share your build with me, share pictures of it, I'd be happy to share that with the audience. Um, but I do respond to everybody even when people they, they friend me just looking for free support that's all they want hey i saw your videos now work work for me for free i even respond to them i go for free technical support visit www.techguy.org and they can help you there so it kind of bothers me though because i don't want people to friend me just because they want free support if they want to pay me friend me all day right if you're looking for something if you just want to friend me and follow my feeds, I post news stories up and links to my videos. Uh, I got about 80 slots left right now. Some people say, well, I don't like Facebook. Can I friend you another way? No, it's free. So don't. Do us both a favor if you're that kind of person and just don't. I'm not asking you to. I'm saying if you want to. Well, I want to, 
I just don't want to do it that way. Well, that's usually what somebody who has money says. They go, I will pay you, but none of those people ever offer to pay me. And I'm sorry, but I'm not all about the money. The problem is time. So if somebody has paid me and they're waiting patiently and I'm helping somebody for free while the person who paid continues to wait, how is that fair? See what I'm saying? It's not that I don't want to. It's just the right thing to do. And then before you know it, the day is gone. Time flies. So if you think I'm a jerk, I just, it's just one of me, man. I'm trying, I'm trying. And you're always going to upset somebody no matter what you do. But I just, I hope you understand why. That's all. He's a jerk, but I know why he's a jerk. <laughs> so that makes it okay. I mean, if somebody has another solution to it, I'm all ears, but I don't know what else to do. X246869 has contributed $6.89 in Canadian. I need to learn how to say these things. He said, I'm starting to use the Silverstone M2 drive from your video. Oh, you mean the M2 adapter? Yeah, that M2 to USB adapter is pretty cool. Now, to test the power supply, I don't need to install it. All I have to do is change out two cables. I don't need to hook up the DVD drive, you know. I just need to hook up the 24-pin power. I need to unplug power before I work on the system for security, safety, not security, safety first. Uh, and then there's a eight pin connector. Okay, stop. Let me, sh let me show you what I see here. Remember, everything is live, nothing is scripted. I have no idea. Hold on, I'm trying to fix the camera. This cable, I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. Oh, man. This is the 8-pin CPU power cable. You should be able to see that now. It's not in. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I can try, let me try zooming it in some more. That's all the way zoomed. Let me grab a flashlight. I'm trying to get you an angle. It's very difficult to show it to you. So this is the CPU power cable. That's not what I want you to look at. It's above this. Oh, man. I said to Crazy Vera, I said, check all the connections. They can come loose in shipping. I, well, I don't want you to pay the 60 to $80 to ship it back to me if you can just plug a cable in. He said, I checked everything. Now listen, this may not be the, the solution, but it's clearly not going to turn on because it's not plugged in. What I'd like to do is get you a nice close-up so that you can see what I see. So I'm going to grab my, this was my old main camera. This is a, this is a Sam, uh, Samsung, this is a Canon G40, if you guys are wondering. This, is, this was what I was filming with for the last year or so. I always date my batteries because you have to, you know, the battery life as the batteries get older. Come on camera, focus. It's not gonna focus, there it is. So that battery's over, well no, it's not quite two years old. We're good on that battery. And these, the Canon batteries, this battery is $170 because it's made in Japan. I can go on Amazon or eBay and I can buy the Chinese made batteries for $35.
but they don't, they, their life isn't as long as, as the Japanese made batteries, meaning this battery will probably still be good in four or five years. The Chinese batteries have to replace every two years. In the long run, the Chinese batteries are still cheaper, but it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the butt. Can I say ass? I think it's, it's okay, right? I've said it twice now. Arse. Arse. I can't believe I just did that. I'm a passionate man. Greg Vibe Dance to My Beats contributed to Euro. Thank you, Greg. And I will dance to your beat. Dance, monkey. So I've got an HDMI cable right here. And I'm going to plug one end of this into my video capture card. The video capture card, by the way, was a sole gift. Oh, I'm sorry, it was, it was not a sole gift. It was a gift from one person. It's a $900 Magewell four-port PCI Express HDMI input capture card. And a viewer who watches me out of England, his name is Colin Hilton, said, PayPal me $900. He said, buy that capture card. I want to support your channel, and I, I want to see what you can do with it. I had, I had told people in my video, I wasn't begging. I'm not out here panhandling. I just said, man, I got my eyes on this capture card, and when I get enough money, I'm going to buy it. And some people sent in like, you know, 20 bucks, 10 bucks. And I was thinking, you know, this will add up and I'll get to $900. And then Colin Hilton goes, boom, here you go. I was like, what? So I like to mention his name as often as possible because how cool is that? How amazing and generous and thoughtful and considerate. And I used to, not that that undoes everybody else, right? It's just... He just made up for all the people who can't or won't contribute in one contribution. And that just blows my mind. I never expected it. I never saw it coming. And I turned around and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And I bought the capture card with that money, plugged it in. And now you can see I can have four inputs going on at the same time. And now that I've upgraded to 4K, I had to get a black magic capture card. So now I have two capture cards, one that goes at 4K and the other four at 1080, so I can have five on-screen displays synchronized simultaneously. Moving up, moving up. When you see Colin, he doesn't appear all the time. He's in England, there's a big time difference. But when you see him, say hello. That's a guy that you want to be your friend, and I hope I want to. I hope you want to be all your friends. But anyway, just generosity like that. Not not everybody can have it to give. So in, anyway, I just can't express my gratitude enough. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can show you what I'm looking at. Right up there. Do you see the eight-pin power? Can you see it now? Hold on, let me zoom it in a little bit more. You see how it's not plugged in? So, switch back. I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to push that on. Just heard it click. I'll plug it all back in. Well, not yet. Sorry. 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 We're going to put this all back the way it was. Plug the cable in. Flip it on, I go to the input one, hit the power switch, here we go. Still doesn't solve this problem why that's not spinning. 
but um, one problem at a time. I may not be that lucky, but regardless, that it had to be addressed. It's possible that Crazy Vera did disconnect it and plug it back in, and when he plugged it back in, he didn't plug it back in all the way. It's possible it came loose in shipping when I shipped it to him or when he shipped it back to me. I was really hopeful it was going to be something simple because I'm due for something simple by now. I'm due. <laughs> the universe doesn't work that way. You get what you get, and you like it. But I don't understand why this fan isn't turning. What's going on here? Let's disconnect this fan. Let me cut power to this, because we are definitely not getting video here. And let me plug this back in one more time. I know I'm still in the small window, but there's really nothing for you to see because it's, it's tight space. There it is. Let's try that. Let's see if that fixes a fan. I've got nothing. Hold on. Turn it back off. Let's try the other fan header. I wanna, I'm just trying to determine if it's the fan or the fan header. There's two side by side here. Okay, fan is still not turning, so I'm going to grab one of those extra fans that Mitch left here yesterday. See how fast I go through parts like this, and I can doesn't doesn't come out of my pocketbook, right? They're just fans. I got lots of them, and I'm not going to install it. I'm just going to plug the fan in and see if it spins to help me determine if something's going on with the motherboard. It's usually a fan. Fans are one of the most common things that go out. Anything that's got a moving part, when something moves, it has friction. Where there's friction, there's heat, and where there is heat, there is wear, and where there is wear, there is eventual failure. Okay, let's try Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, that's, that's coming from the motherboard. I'm going to try the other fan header just to be thorough. Just to be thorough, we're going to go on the other fan header. Hang in there. I know I'm still on the small screen. Well, well, you know what? We know it's not going to... I don't expect to get video here just to check the fan. So I'm going to, in just a minute, I'm going to put you back on the big camera. Bear with me. I'll just do it right now. It's bugging me. Oh, I am on the big camera. Okay, never mind. Forget what I just said. I thought I was still on the other camera. All right. Let's switch back on. No, nothing. All right, so that's not getting power. Now, it could possibly not be getting power because, like I said earlier, it could be a bad power supply. I'm going to leave, uh, you know what? I'm not going to leave that. I'm going to plug the other one back in because I don't think there's anything wrong with the fan. I do believe the problem is related to power delivery through the board, which could be a number of different things. And we just start with one thing at a time. One thing at a time. If I can get my hands in there. Mitch, I need you to hold the light. Mitch needs longer arms. Is 
I know this is just riveting to watch, isn't it? Okay, pulling the power cable. Pulling this cable from the video card, the motherboard power, and the CPU power is coming off. We're gonna grab the new power supply, which I have over here. I'm not even gonna install it. I'm just gonna plug the cables in. That's all I'm doing right now. Power supply tester can only test for voltage. It can't test for amperage. And the problem with a power supply tester is it'll say I'm getting 12 volts, I'm getting 5 volts, I'm getting what I'm supposed to get voltage-wise. But if you've ever been in a car, and I think we all have, when a car battery fails, usually, like you can open the door and the dome light turns on, you can turn the radio on, but when you put the key in the ignition and you go to start the car, there's not enough amperage to crank the engine over because your battery's bad. And if you put a voltmeter on it, it'll say you're getting 12.8 volts out of the battery, whatever it is, right? That's the same with a power supply. You can't just measure voltage. You have to put a load on it to see if it can draw the power, if it can pull the power from it without failure. And this is why I will not buy a refurbished power supply. Now, a good power supply tester that allows you to, it'll have buttons and lights and dials and, you know, it's a, it's a an electronic engineer's wet dream, it will cost you several thousand dollars, or at least over a thousand dollars. Or you can buy a power supply like this for under 50 bucks. Sometimes you can even get them for 30 bucks. That's your best power supply tester because it's cheap. It doesn't require any special skill or knowledge on how to use it properly. And you'll know your answer instantly. In America, we're all about getting things done quickly and helping as many people as possible. If I have to spend time opening up a power supply, hitting it with an oscilloscope, desoldering, resoldering, ordering parts, I've, in that span of time, I could have helped four other people. So that's why people say, well, you're not a repair person, you're a parts swapper. Nobody in America does repair. Nobody. I mean, maybe there's, when I say nobody, I mean most like the vast majority of repair facilities, if you bring your car in for a new water pump, they're not gonna rebuild your water pump while you wait. You're gonna wait longer. And if they don't rebuild that specific model of water pump on a regular basis, they might do it wrong. It's faster and therefore cheaper to get another water pump and replace it, get you out of the shop and back behind your, the wheel of your car faster for less money and then those water pumps get sent to a, a, another country where people get paid to rebuild water pumps. That's all they do all day. And if you did something all day every day, you'd start to get really good at it too. Same holds true with pretty much every industry. It's pretty rare these days that somebody breaks out a soldering iron and does that repair because it takes too much time. Parts in this day and age are pennies. Labor is more money than it's ever been in America. So do you want to pay a guy $125 an hour or even $45 an hour to replace a 30 cent capacitor or just pay the $30, put the power supply in, right? Have a new warranty. That's the other thing with repair. What if whatever caused that part to go bad, all they did was replace the bad part. But what if the thing earlier in the chain of the circuit is also bad, they didn't catch it. So now it broke you know, again after a few days, you've got to take it back. Even if it's under warranty, you still have the inconvenience of taking it back, the guy puts it back on his oscilloscope and around the wheel goes. Just buy a new one, slap it in and get on with your life. So yes, I'm a proud part swapper because while well, somebody is spending their time trying to fix something with a soldering iron and an oscilloscope for one person, I'll have helped four people. So Nia.
Now, remember to plug your power connector, because I've done that. I've plugged it back in the old one. It doesn't work. This one's worse. It won't even turn on. Switch is in the off position. Plug that in. Now we can flip it on. We're just going to let it hang here. It ain't going nowhere. If it works, then we'll swap the power supply out and we'll redo the cable management. If it doesn't work, if everything's the same, then we can remove the power supply out of the equation and focus more on the motherboard RAM or CPU. I've only seen a handful of bad CPUs. It's very, very rare. However, trying to find a motherboard that fits with that CPU is a lot of money and it can be cheaper to simply replace the RAM, I'm sorry, to replace the CPU and the motherboard than to buy an older motherboard. Older motherboards are more money because they don't make them anymore. And if you're in a production facility and you have to have that board to get you back up and running and somebody's got one, the price goes way, way up, way up there, way up there, like elbow deep. I don't know what that means. Okay, switch back over. Turn this back on. Rear fan is still not turning. Diagnostic code still says zero, zero. Lewis Rossman, not a fan. I'm not a fan of Lewis. I, I think he's a skilled guy, but he needs to, I don't know. You know who the chairman of the FCC is, this Ajit Pai guy? He and Lewis Rossman seem like the same guy to me. Um, just rubs me the wrong way, and he, he has not had kind things to say about me. I don't even know why he's talking about me, but um, I know I was in, doing an interview with Eli, and he came in there, and he made a real nasty comment. And I'm like, what did I ever do to you, man? And who are you? And then I looked, and I went, this guy's got skills with a circuit board. Now he just needs to learn how to have skills with people. <laughs> I'm sure someone will send him this clip and I'll hear about it. Please don't. You're not going to fix it. It's just it, some people just don't. Uh, never mind. I'm not even going to explain it. He knows more than I do about circuit board level repair. Okay? It's true. Okay, we know, oh, wrong power supply. We know now that it's not the power supply causing this problem. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect everything I don't need from the board. I'm gonna keep this power supply hooked up because it's just easier. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna disconnect all of our front port uh, switches, uh, connectors. Let's go full screen. All right, so I'm, I'm disconnecting that. I'm gonna disconnect both SATA cables. This one and this one. I'm disconnecting the front USB 3.0 because if that's shorted out inside, it can create this problem. Make sure there's no flash drives, there's nothing plugged into the system, no printers, no ethernet, nothing that we don't absolutely have to have for the machine to turn on. Make sure the video card's seated well, just kind of give it a wiggle, make sure it's not, you know, loose in there. Make sure the RAM is seated really well. We can take the RAM out. Push it back in. And we'll try this again. Very simple little test. Carrie, I had a code zero zero and it was one of my RAM modules was not pushed all the way in. Yeah, I believe it. You see, I just went to hit the power switch, and it's not going to work right now because I don't, I've disconnected the power switch. But I keep spare power switches. In fact, I got this really cool thing I've shown you guys before. And if somebody reminds me, I will put, put a link in the video. I got this off Amazon, and I, I wasn't looking for this. I stumbled on it. And what it is, it's, a, it's an external front port header for your motherboard. Let's go full screen so I can show it to you looks like this. And the idea here is that you've got your power switch and your reset switch. You even have USB 2.0, I think that is, and then audio, uh, microphone and audio out. 
So if you work on a lot of systems, it's got a quick disconnect. So like if you have a tech bench or you just want to install this in one of your uh, PCI Express slot covers, you don't have to hook up all these. You can just like for right now, I just need the power switch. So I'll look up here and I'll find the one for the power switch. Power LED, hard drive LED. Power switch right here, see? That's the only one I need to hook up. If I want to hook up the others, I can. And I need these two pieces to be plugged in together. It's like $12 on Amazon. And if you're a guy like me, then I feel sorry for you. No, if you're a guy like me, or a gal like me, I'm not judging, then you'll find that that's one of the best 12 bucks you can ever spend. How cool is that? Could I use just a screwdriver and short it out? Absolutely I could. Is that safe? Yeah, kind of. Is it a good idea? Yeah. Is this far superior? Does the screwdriver give me a power LED? Does the screwdriver give me a hard drive LED? Does the screwdriver give me USB ports? Does the screwdriver give me audio ports? I want to see that screwdriver if it does. So I have a lot more options. So right now I'm starting with the power switch, but I might want to hook up some of this other stuff. But yeah, screwdriver could do the same job. Be careful with it though. Don't you could, you know, drop the screwdriver, scratch the trace on the motherboard, and totally ruin your motherboard, and that's not a warranty issue. So just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Right? Hobbyists versus professionals. If you see a professional in a professional workshop, use a screwdriver to turn systems on, ask for your computer back and take it somewhere else. If your friend does it at his house, that's fine. If the guy from the shop comes over to your house and he forgot his little tool, so he's gonna use a screwdriver to MacGyver it, that's fine. But if that's his or her normal process, run far away. Unless they're working for free, and they're willing to accept any damages that they cause because you're messing with somebody who's a hack. But ask me how I really feel. There's just, look, to be a computer technician, all you got to do is say you are one and legally you're good to go. There's no school degree for a computer technician, it doesn't exist. So there are varying levels of competence as there are with mechanics and doctors. We've all had bad doctors, bad dentists, bad plumbers. Just because somebody does something for a living doesn't automatically mean they're any good at it. That's why referrals are so important. If the referral comes from somebody you know and they say, hey man, I brought my computer to this person and they charged me a fair price and they were quick, That's the best advertising. That's the nicest thing you can do for somebody that is self-employed. Without referrals, there's no way I would be in business all this time. Okay. Let's go back to input one. Power supply on. Hit the button. Still getting a zero, zero. Just dead, nothing. I have to remind everybody who thinks there's some people in the chat being nasty, you're gonna find your way out real quick. If, if, if there's nothing stopping anybody from making their own videos. So if you think that you can do this better than me, please do it. But if you're not willing to, then I don't wanna hear negative comments regarding that because for all I know, you're six years old and the ba you know, and your parents are looking away. Anyway, try not to give those people attention because they like that. 
It just feeds the trolls. But thank you to my friends in blue for nipping that stuff in the bud. I like to know that those people don't get far here. And they won't be eligible for any of the giveaways, and they won't be part of this amazing community, right? They're just trying to poison the well. Some people get off on poisoning the well. And I love it when people criticize me, and you look at their YouTube channel, they have zero, zero videos, zero subscribers, and they're using a fake name, and they won't even say who they are or show you what they look like. Keep that in mind when you hear people contradict me. Please. So this has made no difference whatsoever. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to remove one of the RAM modules. We're just going to start with removing one module. And it's hard to get this RAM module out because the video card is here. And I will find a uh, screwdriver here, something that I can reach in there and there we go. This hopefully will be long enough. I'll just hit that retention lever down. Yeah, please always consider the source of information. Me included. If I tell you something, take your time to verify it. The best way you can verify something is to experience it yourself. I encourage you to live your own life. Don't live life through somebody else. Don't let anybody else tell you you're wrong. Don't let anybody else tell you you're stupid. Refuse to accept that. It requires your consent, whether you realize you're giving it or not. Stop consenting to it. One of the reasons I started making YouTube videos was I saw these videos and I said, none of these are good for me. I don't like them and I'm not a video creator and I could do a better job. That's how I became a DJ. That's how I became a computer tech. Everything I've done was based on watching somebody else do it worse. I said, well, I don't know how to do this like on a professional level. This was like way back in the early 90s, 1990. And, uh, and I said, I didn't think I really knew that much, but if that's the guy in charge, I know more than he knows. So if that's all it takes, then please hire me to do that guy's job and I'll show you how I do it. So that should be your motivation to go out there and make your own videos and show me up. Please show me up. I would love that. See, the beauty of it is when you make your own videos, someone else will tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful karma. <laughs> All right, so I got that RAM module out. Let's flip the switch back on and hit the power switch one more time. Switch the video input here. Let's keep an eye on what's happening. Could it be the battery? That's a good question, Paul. I can't remember because this is a used board and I can't remember if I changed the battery, but that, and that usually doesn't prevent a system from booting unless it's like a store brand, like an HP pre-built or I've seen that. In fact, I've got a video showing that exact problem where the HP does not, it does this exact symptom, right? And then I change the battery and it boots, but I've never seen a modular home-built computer exhibit that behavior. But I've got lots of these batteries and I have a battery tester. You know what? We need to check it. That's a great idea. Thank you. So let me go grab my battery tester. We'll go right here. And we'll go right here. And yes. I am a complete idiot. It's true, it's true. And if I can do this, I promise you can do it too. That's the point. I have no desire to prove I'm smarter than anybody. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you how easy this stuff is. Let's take a look. Come on, focus. Focus. Battery's good. It's good. One of the advantages of taking that battery out, in fact, if we unplug the power supply and make sure we cycle the power with the power off to drain the force drain the capacitors, put the battery back in, that should have reset the BIOS for us, which could also cause problems. Like There's a lot of 
potential causes. This is a very generic symptom. But one of the keys in fixing a problem is you've got to be able to replicate the problem. There's nothing worse than an intermittent problem that you can't make happen, hence it's intermittent. Whether it's a health problem, a car problem, you go, hey, the brakes always squeak. You take it to the mechanic, the mechanic says they're not squeaking. I, I can't fix it if I can't make it happen. So on the plus side, we can replicate the problem. That's a good thing. On the downside, we all have to go through a sometimes time-consuming process of elimination and you just kind of go with instinct. Could it be the RAM? Could it be the power supply? You might get lucky and guess right. You might say, well, statistically, that mostly happens with RAM. These X99 boards, uh, Threadripper and X299, are very, very picky with RAM. I had two sticks of G-Skill RAM, and I plugged them in this system, and it would not pass MemTest. Same sticks of RAM plugged into a X90, I'm sorry, um, like an 8700K, 9700K, RAM flies with XMP on and everything, it's perfect. These systems are a pain in the butt. But Ferraris aren't known for their reliability. And when, you, when you're getting a high-end system like this, you're also getting a system that's gonna be very, very finicky. It's sort of a, a diva, if you will. Let's turn this back on, flip this button. So all we did is change the battery. Well, we took the battery out, we tested it, we put it back in. Still getting a zero, zero code on the motherboard. Nothing, nothing has changed. Oh, I also realized I did not unplug the front audio header, so let me take that off. And let's pull this RAM module out. Come on. Oh man, that's really in there. Let's take you back full screen so you might be able to see a little better. Looks like I missed a few contributions. Let me give a few shouts out to some generous viewers. BW has contributed one Canadian dollar. Paul Hoynick, $4.99. Mike Hugh, Hawaii, contributed $2.99. And he says, watching you gives me the itch to build again. Thank you. Reloaded714 has contributed $1.99 and said, this is my donation for the channel. Keep it up. And then he did it again. I don't know if that was intentional. $1.99, this is my donation for the channel. Keep it up. Thank you. Nick Lord Zero contributed five Canadian dollars. Has been an avid watcher since 2010. Would love to know if you can do some videos on custom water cooling. I don't do custom water cooling. My little joke is I'm not a plumber. Um, I just have no interest in, you know, if I'm going to use liquid cooling, I'll use an all-in-one pre-built, you know, ready to go. Time is money and the amount of time that it takes to make your own tubing and your own fittings. Again, I could have helped four customers in that same amount of time. That's a hobbyist thing. No corporation in the world is going to hire you in their IT department and ask you to install a liquid cooler, let alone a customized liquid cooler. If you want to be a tech, if you want to know the difference between a hobbyist and a professional, lose liquid cooling, lose RGB lighting, lose case windows, lose overclocking. Nobody's paying you for that. This is all about time and money, time and money, time and money, time and money. Fix it right the first time. Make sure it lasts a really long time. It's going to be reliable and make sure it's performing at the peak. If you need something faster, go spend more money on a better CPU, spend more money on RAM, spend more money on an NVMe drive that's big. The bigger they are, the faster they go. Stop wasting your time, in my opinion, on hobbyist activities. If you like hobbyist activities, that's great, but that's not what we do here. That's pretty much every other YouTube tech channel. That's pretty much most of them, 99% of them. I am trying to do something different here, so please don't ask me to be like everybody else, because I mean, I like you and I want you to stay, but if that's what you're expecting, you're only gonna be disappointed here. This is real work. This is a real customer system. When I'm done with this, it's gonna get shipped back to Texas, and it better work. I mean, my reputation and my pride is on the line. And besides, 
Crazy Vera will use it to edit more videos, which means more content for you if you don't want to sit there and watch four-hour videos. He can cram those down to just the, you know, the topic at hand without all of these discussions like I'm having now. That'll all get cut. And now the video gets down to like 40 minutes or an hour, which is more reasonable for most people who just don't want to hang out. But in the meantime, 1,510 people watching, I think that's a new record for me. It's great. It feels good. Why don't you let me know where you're watching me from? Put it, put it right down there in the, in the chat. Tell me where in the world are you watching me from? I don't need your street address, just your <laughs> country, city. It's surreal to see all these places pop up all over the world, to think people all over the world are watching this as it happens live, because I'm just alone in my kitchen. Well, I got my dogs. I'm never alone. <clears throat> I was trying to get that RAM module out. And that is really jammed. Oh, you know what? The bottom side doesn't, doesn't move. <laughs> well, that explains that mystery. All right, we're going to move this RAM module. No, I'm not. I'm going to take this RAM module out. What I do with the other one? Laid it down. We're going to grab this one over here. This is that Corsair Dominator uh, RAM that we talked about earlier. Oh, a lot of people joining us from the UK. We got Pennsylvania, lots of UK, New Jersey, Canada, Scotland, Ireland, Austria, Portugal, Germany, Alabama, Tennessee, Nebraska, Iowa, California, Denmark, Sweden, Indianapolis, Camden Home in Maine, Yorkshire in the UK, Louisville, Kentucky, Lebanon, more in Sweden, Greece, Serbia, Virginia, Baltimore, another in Greece, Manchester, Manu, Oi, I don't know, Michigan by Toledo, Ohio, I'm from Michigan, I love everybody from Michigan, Bulgaria, South Carolina, Norway, Wakefield in the UK, Somerset in the UK, Clayton, New Jersey, Austin, Texas, Illinois. There's no noise in Illinois. It's Illinois, okay? It bothers me when people do that. Another friend in Michigan, Kuwait, the Netherlands, Quebec, Washington, another Portugal, Brazil, Romania, Canada, Tennessee, Georgia, Surrey, England, Belgium, London, Fort Wayne, Trinidad. Greetings from Brazil. Rojas, Mexico. South Dakota, Salt Lake City, Utah. Look at this, isn't this incredible? Something called Uppsala, I don't know what that is. North Carolina, Colorado. Argentina, Lancaster. Is from Lancaster. Oh, Lancaster. Palestine, a county in Michigan I can't pronounce. Winston Ang Lu just contributed $10. I know Winston watches us from Vancouver. South Africa, Amsterdam, Kansas, Denmark, Nebraska, Missouri, Minnesota, Macedonia, Singapore, Kildare Island. Wow, very cool. Very cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me know where you're watching me from. Scott George says he's from Lone Pine Mall, which used to be Twin Pines Mall until Marty and Doc went back to the future, hit one of those trees. Well, they went back to the 50s and hit one of the trees, and then Twin Pines Mall became Lone Pine Mall. Push up my glasses. Actually. So this is the first RAM module I took out. It was on this side. I'm going to move it over to this side just to make sure we don't have a bad socket. We're going to move that right over here. Line it up. Push in one side and the other side. Let's try it one more time. Let's fire it up. Power on. Still getting a zero, zero on the main board.
Now, you might say to yourself, we're not getting anywhere. Au contraire. In fact, we know many things right now. Yeah? What are they? Tell us! How do you know that she is a witch? Well, she looks like one. Never mind. I drifted off somewhere. We know it's not the power supply. We know it's probably not the RAM. We tried both modules and we moved them and they both behaved the same way. We know it's not the front port header in any way, shape, or form because we removed the USB, the audio, and all the switches. We know those three things are not a problem, right? We also know the rear fan isn't turning, and we tried a different fan, and that's plugged into the motherboard. So this is leaning towards a motherboard problem. So we are narrowing this down relatively quickly. Uh, it's probably not the graphics card, though it's possible. And um, what else can we? What else have we learned? We know it's nothing to do with anything connected with the SATA cables, because those have been disconnected, and because we have a different power supply. Like, let's say there was a short in the power of the optical drive. We're not even on that power supply right now. So we know the optical drive is good. Anything to the SATA ports is not affected, or it's not causing this. Um, all that leaves. What are we left with? Well, we're left with the motherboard, the RAM, and the CPU. Now, to diagnose this to this point, the best thing you can do is take the board out of the case because something could have fallen behind it. Something could be leaning against it that you can't see. It's just a few screws. It only takes a minute. And I can put this power supply away knowing with confidence that even though I said that was a cheap power supply, it's fine. Nothing wrong with it because it's doing exactly the same thing a brand new power supply out of the box is doing, and it's highly unlikely that we're gonna get two power supplies that behave in exactly the same damaged way. You understand? So it's likely not the power supply. I'm gonna keep this little switch out because I'm gonna need it to power on the board here when I remove it from the case. But I wanna clean my work area up and move some of this stuff. So I'm gonna put this stuff back, bear with me. And I'm going to put my battery tester back. I'm going to put my screwdriver back. I'll put my spare fan back. Put my power supply back. So we'll have them for next time. Looks like I missed a few contributions, so once again, I want to give people shouts out. So, a shout out to Remix72 contributed two dollars. JD Harris contributed two dollars. Tony Wallow contributed a dollar ninety nine. I think that catches me up. Thank you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel. All right. Question about stream quality. On my side, everything's green. Uh, we've had a few drop frames, but it's nothing unusual. It's fine. So if you're having stuttering issues or buffering issues, please lower the quality of the video. You just hit that little gear icon and select a lower quality. It still looks good at 720 if you're at 1080. We're broadcasting out in 4K, and it's a 4K is a bandwidth hog and a processor hog too. So, uh, but we are dropping a few frames, but nothing unusual. Nothing that's like I'm monitoring the live feed and it's not doing anything for me. But if you guys are noticing, uh, if I'm wrong, and then you guys are seeing a lot of drop frames more than I'm than OBS is reporting, let me know. I may end up dumping 4K and going back to 1080 if I have to, but really like the 4K. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a viewer problem or a broadcasting problem. And the best way is to just ask. Ask if others, don't assume, always ask. See if other people are having the same experience you are to help, again, narrow the cause. All right, all this can go over here. I don't need any of that. 
I'm going to keep this RAM module over here and these screws over here. Let me move my, move my glasses. Where's my glasses? Put that there. Bring out the old DeWalt DW920. I guess they're not making this driver anymore. Shame. It's way overkill for working on a PC, but then so am I. CCTV users contributed two pounds. <laughs> I'm not going to read what you wrote. He's using my own joke, but it's only funny when I say it. But thank you for the contribution. I do appreciate it. So I'm just going to make sure everything's unplugged from the board. That was just a front case fan I just unplugged. Uh, this is the CPU fan. We'll leave that alone. i got to take the graphics card out. Oh. People said, man, you need a magnetic tray to hold your screws. I've got two magnetic trays and they're stuck together. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have two magnetic trays. I don't use them. I don't like using them. I don't know why. I just don't like using them. I like, this is how I do it. It's my, it's my process, man. So please don't send me another magnetic tray. This is a doorstop. I jam it under this lazy season and now it won't spin. See, that's the way we do things. This is old school. In the eighties, we didn't have a lot of money and we had to make do. And you had to learn to uh, MacGyver stuff. You know, you had to learn how to, see that's an old TV show from the eighties. Or was it the nineties? I don't know. You just had to take the stuff you had at hand and make it work. You know who was really good at that? Uh, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan would use everything in his environment when he would deal you know, battle somebody, and it was just genius to watch that man. He could climb a building by just because a tree was planted close to it. He could he could brace his back against the the tree and use his feet and just right up the building like it was nothing. He could use a ladder and flip it around and stick you in the middle of it and then twist it and flip you over and then grab the ladder and stand on it and. Just a chair, he could flip a chair and anything that was in his environment. And he was fast and it was all real. Everything Jackie Chan did was real. It wasn't special effects. There were no strings or wires pulling him. It was real. And he's got all the broken bones to prove it. Or he had. It's a great movie called, uh, what was it called? Something about the Bronx, you guys probably know. Man, if you never saw that Jackie Chan movie, now it's gonna bother me. Fight in the Bronx, something about the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx, oh, good, good movie. Good movie. Is the cooler not completely vertical? No, the cooler, the cooler can have a little play in it. That's just the way these Hyper 212s work. They have a little pin that sticks down in there and there's two indentations on that uh, support bracket that Mitch was complaining about. And that's perfectly normal. It moves about a mm, quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's how you know you installed it right. The Mugen doesn't do that, by the way. Sean Baxter contributed two pounds, says, great video as always, Kerry. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Now, what I'm going to do next is release the, re the mechanism that's holding the graphics card in. There's a little retention lever in the back. It's hard to get to because the heat sink's right there. Be very careful because a lot of people break their PCI Express slots. That's why Asus and Gigabyte and other manufacturers now put a metal frame to reinforce those slots because people were breaking them. They're usually not breaking them putting the card in. They're breaking them when they're getting the card out. See me struggling? It's just not coming. But don't force it. Just try and figure out, use a tool, use something to get in there and hit that release mechanism. I've hit it, but I probably didn't push it far enough back. And as you're pushing on it, you can also wiggle the card because sometimes it kind of gets jammed up. Sometimes you even have to put the card back in and then try it again. There, that feels better. 
Right. Now this also happens. The graphics card's being trapped underneath the screw that's not even a part of it. It's right below. And I'd have to take it all the way out, just enough. See that? That's very common. Very, very common. So try and figure out what's preventing the card from coming out before using brute force. In fact, don't even ever use brute force. I'm going to take the screws out holding the board in. We're going to pull the board completely out. One. Two. Three. Four. Let's get that fan unplugged. We don't need that. Five. Six. It's in there somewhere. There it is. Magnetized screwdriver works every time. Seven. And finally, when we remove this last screw, this whole motherboard is going to fall right out. So make sure that you're ready for that. And think about that when you consider what order you want to take the screws out. I don't want to leave that bottom screw out and have the whole top of this bend and break the board in half because I didn't catch it. So I leave one of the top screws in, right? Because gravity is going to make it fall from the top first, not the bottom first. That's how gravity works. So <clears throat> in case you didn't know that, welcome to Earth. We hope you enjoy your stay. Don't worry. It's always just temporary. It'll be over before you know it. Now we pull on the back of the board and then pull it back. And what just popped out was my uh, USB dongle for the keyboard and mouse because it, it was plugged in and I didn't unplug it. And it the IO shield kept it from getting pulled with the board and it separated and fell out. Perfectly normal, no harm done. And let's move the case out of the way. And we'll place the board down. So we got the board completely out of the case, obviously. Let me move the case. Let's just get it out of here so I don't knock it over. Not that that would ever happen. I got about an hour left before I have to start getting ready for tech bets tonight. It will be broadcast here on YouTube. I need about 45 minutes to an hour to, I got to clear the counter and move the cameras and it's a whole different process. It requires a different setup. Okay. So with the board out, let's see if I can get you a little better of a camera angle here. Let's, let's try and get you zoomed in, show you some nice 4K close-up detail. Ooh, pretty. Some people want to know, what is this? This is an Asus X99. I'll show you. You can see the name on the board right there. X99-A. It's got USB 3.1, so it's not really that old. And it turns out I put that power supply away too soon because there's, there's no way I'm going to run that power. I'm not deep. I'm not going to undo my cable management when I have a spare power supply to use. So I'm going to grab that power supply again. What did I do with it? Put it over here. Whew. It's hot in here. All right, so I got my power supply. And we'll just, ideally, I'll keep it on the Lazy Susan so I can spin it. So let's grab our 24 pin connector. And we'll plug it in right here. So we'll grab 
let's see, that's for video card, CPU power. That's going to go right there. A lot easier to get to it now. I like using a tech bench for this, and they sell really nice ones at highspeedpc.com. H I G H S P E E D P C dot com. So if you work on a lot of systems, it's worth investing in one of those. This is the USB dongle for the keyboard and mouse. I'll just plug that into one of these ports back here. And then this is that front panel. Whoops, I guess I clicked the mouse. This is the front panel switch thingy. And again, I just need the power switch hooked up. So we will plug that into the power switch header right there. I'll just keep that up here. And we'll grab the video card. We'll slap that in here. So one of the problems with putting the video card in right now is it's going to, this part of the graphics card needs to hang down lower. It's going to hit the Lazy Susan. So I need to adjust this motherboard position to accommodate for that which we are about to encounter in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is move the board close to the edge so that when I put the graphics card in, make sure that this little slot is open. You see that little piece is going to hang down lower than the board. Well, you probably can't because the camera's not low enough. Let me, let me just widen out the camera. We're a little too close. Let's put it right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you're going to see that this, this part here hangs down low. So the board has to hang off the edge a little bit, which is why a tech bench is great for this kind of work. Then we can plug the HDMI cable back in there, which I have right here. I'll plug that in right here. And I need to give this video card power. And we'll grab one of those cables here off the power supply. And we will plug that in just like that. Are you with me? The RAM module back here is installed. That looks happy. CPU power, motherboard power. That's really all we should need to turn this thing on. So I'm going to give power to the power supply now with the power supply in the off position. Now I can flip the power supply back on and hit this button right here. Still seeing zero, zero on the board. The, the graphics card fans are starting to spin and then they're stopping. I don't know how well you can see that. They're kind of starting and stopping. It's very unusual. Watch the graphics card fan. Um, yeah, I said that right. It's like it's not getting enough juice to fire up. Could that be a cause of a bad graphics card? It, it's possible. It's absolutely possible. But it certainly seems to be a power delivery issue. Isn't that weird? I think it's weird. So to cut power, I'm going to reach back to the power supply, hit the off switch on the back of the power supply. That's just the safest way to do it. There's also, on this motherboard, I really don't even need this front port switch because there are two little buttons right down here. There's a power and a reset built right on the board because people who overclock, they get to use these a lot. Isn't there such joy in overclocking that you get to do that a million times until you get your system stable? Now, is it possible we have a bad graphics card? Absolutely. So again, we're, I spare graphics card. In fact, uh, the one Steve sent us. Why don't we just break that bad boy out? Who knew I would be 
making that this soon. Doesn't matter what the model of the graphics card is. We're only trying to diagnose at this point. We don't know what to repair yet. So I've got the uh, GTX 680 I just showed you guys. It only takes a minute. Again, working with the power supply switch off. I've even plugged this into the wrong, I wasn't paying attention. I should have plugged it in over here. That's a doesn't matter though. In fact, I'm kind of glad I did because I know we don't have a bad slot. But I would never leave it installed that way because that's a faster slot. All right, let's plug in this one. This requires two six pin power connectors. One goes just like Mitch's the other day. I never saw one go above the other, but now I've seen two in two days. Funny how life works like that, huh? Maybe I just don't remember seeing it. Maybe it's been such a long time. I don't know. I'm plug this in here. Turn the switch back on on the power supply. And we'll hit the power button. Now the graphics card, this fan is spinning. We're still getting a zero, zero. On the motherboard, you can see the reflection of the zero zero on the mother on the uh, on the video card. So, not a graphics card issue. I mean, let me let me just switch over to the input to make sure. But I'm still seeing the zero zero. Yeah, we're still got no signal. So, it's definitely not the graphics card. We can remove that from the equation. We'll turn this back off. Wait for a second, let the power drain. I wanna see the little LEDs on the board go out. Sometimes you can speed that along by pressing the buttons to drain those capacitors. And I'm gonna remove and put away this graphics card so I don't get confused over what was in this when I put it back together. Sorry, the camera keeps auto-focusing like that. Bear with uh, because I don't have a cameraman and uh, we got to deal with it. So I'm just going to put this back in its bag and we're going to put it away. So we know we don't have a bad graphics card. We know we don't have a bad power supply. We know there's nothing in the case that's causing this. So what's left? Ladies and gentlemen, what is left? Conditioning on. There, AC just kicked on. Hallelujah. What am I going to do when July comes around? It's already this hot. Time for another one. Everybody says, I think it's the motherboard. That's what crazy Vera said. But I think everybody's quick to jump to a motherboard because that's the problem that is the most commonly misdiagnosed. Now, I'm not saying you're wrong. It could be. But why would the board just suddenly die? We may never know, but it may not be dead. We could be just rushing to a conclusion. Missile Man thinks it's a bad CPU. I have 
rarely, rarely ever seen a CPU go bad, especially an Intel CPU. The common issue with this motherboard is the voltage regulator modules. You've only got a 500 watt power supply on an X99. That's a common misconception. I have a kilowatt power meter plugged in right over here. You guys can't see it. And it shows you how much power is actually being drawn from the wall. This doesn't draw more than 200 watts. And again, it's, it's not their fault. They're just watching other people's videos that it's just false information. You don't know any better, so you believe it's true, and then you pass it on to other people. And then it makes a, a teaching very difficult because when you don't know something, it's easy to teach it. But when you think you know something and you know it wrong, <laughs> it's harder to retrain people than it is to teach them right to begin with. But I have videos that actually prove this. And uh, the kilowatt power meter, I'll show you what it looks like. It's, we're plugged into it right now. But you can buy one of these on Amazon, and if you're one of those people that thinks you need a big power supply, buy one of these for 20 bucks on Amazon. Remind me, I'll put a link to it. And you can see how much actual wattage is being drawn from the wall. And then you might think twice about advising people to buy these really big power supplies. Because we're not drawing more than 200 watts. Now, when we really push the system hard with some heavy graphics use, video rendering, we might hit 400, 450, but we'll never go over 450. Highly doubtful. So just be cautious of the information you see online because anybody can make a video. Look, I'm doing it. You know what I needed? You know what pre-qualifications I needed? Nothing. But I can tell you, unlike most people in this industry, I've been doing this since 1991 in a professional capacity, not as a hobbyist, not as an enthusiast, I was getting paid and I still am getting paid in a professional capacity. Most businesses, they last three years, they go out of business. My business has been running for over 20 years. I might just have some information that you, you might find to be more accurate. Maybe not. Um, it doesn't matter if you choose to believe me, it doesn't change the facts. Like you can choose to believe the earth is square if you want to. It makes no difference in my life. I really don't care. It's your life, and if you want to see things that way, go right ahead. But in the case of a power supply, it's something you can verify. You don't have to just rely on faith or because you like some other video channel better. They have a better personality than I do. So you just like them better, and therefore they're right. Be scientific. Take all your emotions out of it and just look at the facts and you just might learn something if you're open-minded enough. I'm gonna take this other RAM mod. Oh, you know what? I know these RAM modules work, but I do have that spare set that Corsair sent me. What if, just for giggles, what did I do with that RAM? Did I put it back? Let's go get it. There, we're gonna use, I wasn't expecting to use this on this, but I gotta cut the tape on it. It's brand new. Zoom you back out a little bit because the camera's going a little crazy. I know you guys, you know, sucks to not have a cameraman. Where's Mitch when I need him? Where are you, Mitch? Get over here. <laughs> Mitch lives a good 45 minutes away. So by the time he comes here, I'll already be done. So don't come over here, Mitch. Stay away.
All right, so here in the package is our brand new Ram. There's something in a box too. What else did we get? I've never seen a package of Ram this big since 1847. It's like, a, oh, there's a power adapter to power the heat sink fans. Jeez. I told Corsair, you just, if you just send me a pair of Vengeance, I'd be happy. Vengeance is sort of the, the gaming line. It's not, but this system won't work like with a lot of RAM. It just doesn't work. That's how fussy it is. So I have a backup plan if we can't get this fixed. Another gentleman sent me an i7 system. He says, here, you can have this to give it away. That might make a better system for Crazy Vera than this one with regards to reliability. You know, you're better off with a Toyota than a Ferrari if you want reliability over a long period of time. If you're measuring performance and the car won't start or the car won't go, it's really hard to measure the performance on a car that constantly has to be repaired. So it's sort of a tortoise in the hare story, right? Where the tortoise ends up being faster for a different reason. It looks the same. It smells the same. Just one module. Well, no, we'll put two in. Let's put two in. Let's put two in. And yeah, let's drop the graphics card back in here again. Perfect. HDMI. Very, very good. Power to the graphics card. That's going to go. See, a lot of people, sometimes they, they get it in their head. They go, oh, I watched Carrie's video. I can fix my own system. And they'll write this page and a half of everything they've tried. And I, I, I just tell people, I'm like, look, man, you need to take that to a professional because you're going to keep buying and parts and parts until you figure this out. Some parts like CPU and RAM cannot be returned for most places. And when you're done and you figured out what it was, all the leftover parts could build another system, so it would have been cheaper and faster to take it to a professional shop where they already have all those parts to swap, and they're not, they're not, all, not all professional shops are the same. They're not all equal. But a good one will have all the spare parts. Like you see me dragging stuff out. I don't build a customer for everything. Oh, well, buy a power supply, buy a case, buy this, buy that. Otherwise, yeah, you might as well do it yourself. So some problems, it's cheaper and faster to take it to a shop. For other people, it's worth it for the lesson, for the experience, to spend whatever they have to spend because it's still cheaper than college and that lesson will stay with you for life because of how time consuming and expensive it was. But if you just want to get back up and running and you tried what was reasonable for you to try, also accept when it's time to say, okay, this is what I can do. Now it's time to let somebody else handle it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no pride lost, I assure you. It could save you time, save you money, take the emotion out of it, do the logical thing. We've got about 1,650 people watching live now, which is fantastic. I want to remind you, in an hour and a half or so, we're going to start an episode of Tech Bets, and we're going to tell stories about some of the most bizarre repairs we've had, both Mike Smith who's in Philadelphia, and myself, we've been running our own computer repair businesses, each more than 25 years of professional experience. We have over 50 years of combined experience. And what Mike does is completely different from what I do, and we often don't agree, and I think that makes for a much more interesting show. We have different approaches in how we run our businesses. We have different types of customers. We have different responsibilities. But unlike hobbyists and enthusiasts, we are both held accountable and liable for the work that we do for our clients. So it gets real serious. And sometimes some of these problems these clients call with are, they sound really complicated and they turn out to be something simple. So I hope you'll join us for that later. It'll be here on, on the channel. Yeah, we're gonna start at uh, eight o'clock Eastern, which is about an hour and a half away. 
Okay, so all that's hooked back up. We're gonna flip the switch back on and power. Hello, I guess I gotta plug this end of the cable in. Remember I unplugged it to show you that kilowatt device. Oh, and this was the little bridge connector. Where did this go? This went on here like that. You don't have to have it on there, but. Still zero, zero. Fans kind of spin and start. Nothing's changed so far. Give it a minute. Now this board has three switches. Now if, if these switches were moved and they're in a setting right now, they could have been moved accidentally that can cause this problem. I'll have to look at the manual to see where these switches are supposed to be. I need my glasses to read that too. Because these three switches, which most motherboards don't have, one is Easy XMP, one is EPU, one is TPU, one and two. So TPU is like when you want to put a device on that locks the computer case if somebody opens it to steal parts. It's a, it's a way of locking the system down electronically uh, that can engage a lock electronically and it can do other things. I've never actually seen it in use. It's something corporate America uses. And then of course uh, Easy XMP. There's a switch so I can flip that off and on. I don't think it's going to make any difference. This looks like everything is okay. Hold the power button down. The system shuts off. I'm going to move Easy XMP to the right. A green light just comes on. We'll turn it back on. It doesn't seem to be having any impact whatsoever. These numbers on the front, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says zero, zero here on the front. And nothing's changed. Hold the power button in until the system shuts off. We're going to close that switch off. We'll flip the other one on. EPU is now lit up. I don't know what it's doing. I'm just going to try them. I'm sure the manual would explain it to me, but just in case they needed to be flipped, it's just easy to flip it and see. Uh, you should read the manual because it could flip it to cause harm, but I don't think any of these would do that. I could be wrong. But again, I'm the one who's going to pay the price if I'm wrong. So you choose accordingly. Where's our BIOS reset here? There should be a jumper or a switch. Oh, there's two right next to the switches. Let's pick those up. Let's move those over. One and two. That should clear the BIOS. We'll fire it up. See, it won't turn on now because the BIOS is in clear mode. But the system still has power, so we want to make sure we drain the power because it, even though I've got the jumper set to clear, I want to see these LEDs on the motherboard turn off. That means the capacitors have drained. Very good. I'll move these two little jumpers back. Onto pins one. Oh, they just scattered. Onto pins one and two. There's one. There's the other one. Flip the switch on. Hit the power button. Still zero, zero. Nothing is changing at all. Okay. Still working. We're still, we still have other ideas. Turn the system back off. I'm going to quickly remove the M2 drive, although the M2 drive should not, should not, be able to do this. We don't know for sure until we remove it. So let's just quickly, it's one screw. And guess what? If the motherboard's bad, we're taking the M2 drive out anyway. So one way or another, that's coming out. So we'll just pull the M2 drive out. We'll set it down. Flip the switch back on. Turn the system back on. We're still not getting anywhere with it.
So we've cleared the BIOS, we've removed the M2 drive, we've removed all SATA, we've removed all front panel headers, we've changed the video card, we've changed the RAM. So now we're left with CPU and motherboard only are the remainders. It is possible that the CPU is not seated well enough. It's very unusual, but it can happen. If you got nothing to lose, this is one of the last ditch attempts at what you can try to do to remedy this because you don't want to jump to this right away. You can damage the CPU socket if you're not very careful. And it's absolutely, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a last ditch thing. I'll put the graphics card back here for right now. I shouldn't need these glasses for a little bit. And I'm gonna pull this cooler off of here. I guess I gotta take the fan off first. You know what, I'm gonna move this M.2 out of the way too. It's expensive. Let's just put it back there. And I'm gonna take this RAM, since it didn't fix anything, and I don't wanna confuse my new RAM with my old RAM, so we'll keep this all back together in the kit like it was. Grab the other RAM module from the other side. Place it in there as well. back on and put that back in the box where you will see this again another day another project for another day just coincidental that I just they just shipped it to me the other day it turns out in the long run didn't need it anyway don't work on the system with power plugged in not when you're doing this I don't care what anybody on the internet says be careful. No harm in disconnecting it. But there's potential harm in leaving it connected. We'll take the fan off of this Hyper 212 Evo. We'll set it aside. And I'm going to just pull this heatsink off real quick. Not enough torque on the driver to loosen those, so we'll torque it up. Torque it up. CPU uh, thermal compound looks really good, if I don't say so myself. We're going to bring up this lever. Come on. Bring up this one first, then I can bring up this one next. Then they both swing up. So let's swing it up. Well, that's weird. That's our CPU. And all I'm going to do is reseat it very carefully. This bothers me. I thought this would go all the way up. What's the problem here? to lift this up. So if this little connector isn't right, it's possible it's not putting enough pressure down on the CPU to make the connection below. That bothers me. I can't figure out why it's like that.
All right, whatever. Whatever. Okay, golden triangles got to go that direction. Gently set it into the socket. Lower this lid. Yeah, there's just something not right here. This is really bugging me. actually gets in the way if you don't put this one down first then you can put this one down it's just something wrong with it I don't work on enough of these to remember exactly how that's supposed to be but that doesn't feel right at all now I'm gonna turn this on without a heat sink so I've got to do it quick it's not gonna damage anything if you're quick about it But I want to see something happen besides two zeros, and I should know that pretty quick without having to reapply the heat sink. This is not for the meek. <laughs> Takes a little bravery or stupidity. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Oh, I'm going to turn that on. I still need a graphics card. You're going to do what? Berserk says that that socket is normal. Is it? I can't remember. Just don't like working on these. They're just very finicky. Threadripper's finicky. Socket X99 is finicky. Socket X299 is finicky. In fact, if the socket ends in a 99, you're going to have trouble with it. I'm just telling you, you're going to have trouble with it. So we're going to run it just momentarily without a heat sink. It'll probably, it may even turn on and turn off when it senses no CPU fan, just to protect itself. Still a zero, zero. Nothing's changed. Nothing. We're going to cut the power. I'm going to try the other two RAM sockets just for the sake of trying them. Make sure all the power is drained. There it goes. We're going to go over here to this side. No, I mean, you know what? I'm going to go to the. I'm going to go to. Uh, I'm going to go to these inner sockets first. Let's go to this one. And let's go to this one, just because we can. Okay, okay, flip it on. I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Zero, zero, it, it takes a minute, so we'll give it a minute. But we're sitting on zero, zero. You're not hearing any fans because I don't have any fans plugged in. Nothing's happening here. Turn it off, let the power drain. And let's see, we were, what are the socket numbers here? Let's go to the far end just to try the far end of the sockets. We'll go to A1, and I'm sure the motherboard manual will tell us not to do this, but we're going to do it anyway. Flip it back on. Power. Still sitting at zero, zero. Very strange. Very, very strange. Flip it off. Remember, we don't have a fan on here. We don't want this to get overheated. I want to take a look one more time at the CPU socket. The way that this sits really bothers me. It's like you have to take one side off first, which I remember. I remember that was, but it's supposed to. 
It's supposed to lift the socket up and it's not doing that. You're not supposed to have to lift that socket up with your fingers. I'm going to take the CPU out, I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to grab some real big magnifiers and take a look at those pins to see if there's any damage. Not that those would just suddenly become damaged on their own, but if that socket is not pushing that CPU down hard enough, it isn't going to make a connection, and those pins look perfect. Perfect. So my concern is why doesn't this bracket lift the socket? That's what I want to know. Something's not right. That should be lifting and it's not lifting. Take a look at some of the contributions I missed and give you guys a shout out. Let's uh, thanks to Tony Wallow for $1.99. He says, thanks for your teachings. Brian Lowe has contributed $9.99. Paul from Mars has contributed $5. He says, I am finally watching on a 4K TV. The new camera is awesome and I could count the threads in your shirt. Nice. Fraggle Duff has contributed 10 euro. He says, hey, Kerry, thanks for sharing your years of knowledge. Thank you, guys. Sean Baxter contributed two, two pounds. He says, great video as always, Kerry. Donnie Seeger said, uh, gave us $2. He says, YouTube gave a free super... It's yours, you're worth it. Well, thank you. Our Lund3 contributed $1.28. Thank you guys for your support of the channel. Everything that's contributed goes back into the channel, goes back into parts for giveaways and better cameras, memory cards, batteries, tripods, tripod heads, memory, what did I say, memory cards, HDMI cables, all that stuff. Just thank you. It all goes back in the channel, guys. But I want to know why that's not coming up. What is preventing that? Okay, suggestions from the chat room. What do you guys think? What would you do if you were me? Sergio says you're only missing the change to PCIe slot. Did that earlier, Sergio. Manuel Black contributed a uh, dollar, or a pound, rather. Thank you, Manuel. Carrie, if you have a 5000 series LGA 2011 V3 chip slot, it in and the socket is designed that way. Yeah, it might be. Look, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it, but it's just weird. What do you think, Catherine? He's going to bend the socket pin. The motherboard doesn't work anyway. What difference does it make? And I'm not going to bend the socket pins. I'm not new at this, but thank you for your concern. Freeman666 contributed 20 bucks. He says, thanks for all the best advice. You've always been very helpful. Thank you for contributing to the channel. Give Crazy Vera the i7 system. Try another motherboard. Motherboard is over $250. It was a donated board and a donated chip, and it's not my intent to go spend money to fix this. If I've got spare parts, I'll use spare parts. It's the motherboard due to a short in the motherboard. Send back the motherboard. I don't believe this motherboard is under warranty, but it could be. I think Asus only warranties their boards. Well, everybody warranties their boards for three years. I think we're well past that, unfortunately. Remove the cooler mounting plates. I was thinking about that just to see how it works. 
Do you have a spare CPU? Absolutely not. These are very expensive CPUs, very high end. The only reason I have this CPU on board is that one of the viewers sent it to me. Catherine says replace the board and CPU. Well, Jim G says, sorry, there's no X99 CPU tree to go and shake. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> Uh, toss it in the oven. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. That's possible to heat the board up and dry and see if there's any cold solder joints out there that could resolve that. Somebody says the VRMs, the voltage regulator modules are toast. That's possible. Make sure none of the USB ports on the motherboard pins. Make sure none of the USB... The, there's little pins inside the USB ports, and he's suggesting I look in there. He's right, because if there's a bent pin in there... If they're touching each other, if they're, don't cross the streams, you know? They look good though. But I need a flashlight. What do I do with the flashlight? Let's take a look with the flashlight. That one's clean. 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 Yeah, all USB ports are clean. Ethernet port is clean. You know, there is a reset BIOS button right back here. And if that button is bad, if it's stuck, it would display a very similar symptom as well. Off. Put the RAM back where it was. Actually, no, let's take the RAM out. Let's take the RAM out. What other, what other, you know, it's funny how people tell me how smart they are. Where are they now? <laughs> That's all I want to know. Ooh, getting some drop frames here. It's a little glitchy. Couldn't hurt to try the RMA board, I suppose. Make sure the jumper for the BIOS is not in the clear position. We already did that earlier. You must not have been here. If you're just joining us and you're just throwing ideas out, please don't. If you haven't seen what we've already done, you're not being helpful. But if you have been with me this time watching this diagnostic and I've missed something, I'd love to hear it. And yes, the video is getting a little bit glitchy right now. We're running into a little bit of a connection problem. Plug the motherboard speaker for beep codes. There's not going to be any beep codes. Mm -mm. It says a diagnostic LED. It just says zero, zero. You can look up the ASUS manual and see what zero zero means. $175 for that board refurbished. That's what they're telling me. And there's no warranty on that, right? I mean, you get what you get. And where is it shipping from? China? No, thank you. Steven, Steven must have been the one who sent it. He says that motherboard was new in the box from ASUS less than six months ago. Do you have the receipt that you can send me? Steven? By testing the CPU with another motherboard, you could rule it out. Absolutely, but I don't have another CPU and I don't have another motherboard that are X99. They're too exclusive. They're too expensive. It's not like if I had one laying around, I'd be using it. It wouldn't be sitting on a shelf. I'm going to lower, something's happening with my bitrate. I'm going to just lower the bitrate down. I'm going to stop the stream and come right back. Hang in there for a minute. I've lowered the bitrate from 6,500 down to 5,500. 
in the hopes that that'll help with uh, just really hitting the limits on my uh, upload bandwidth here. So hopefully that fixes some of the little glitches that were happening. But running 4K at 5,500 bit rate is, it's, might as well go back to 1080. But anyway, we'll deal with that. That's one problem at a time. Take the USB dongle off from the motherboard. Yeah. Gainz95 has contributed 10 pounds. He says, just finished upgrading my son's laptop to Windows 10. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution. And thank you for getting rid of Windows 7 or 8 and getting yourself into Windows 10. You, it's, it's far superior. You won't regret it. Juan the Panda says, I've got a, an X99. Let's just drive over. See you in six hours. Hey, that's great. Build him a new one. This was a new one. I mean, I guess Steven sent me the board. I, I'm sorry, Steven. I can't remember who's sending me what, but I would sure love to know if you've got the, the receipt. Because if you've got the receipt on the board, I will RMA it. Gamer Marischal says, I'm not knowledgeable enough to make suggestions. I just have faith in your experience and know you will finally find the solutions you always do. <laughs> I had a boss, one of the first technical jobs I got, uh, he said, uh, you're like a bulldog. And I go, what's that mean? I have a lower, I have an underbite? He goes, no, you get your teeth into something and you will not let it go until you figure it out. I'm like, well, there's, there's always an answer. Why, how can I walk away from something and not know the answer? <laughs> it doesn't, that doesn't jive with me, you know? I have to know. Anyway, I, I didn't hear back from you, Stephen, if you replied, so please, Stephen Bernstein, if you have the receipt, would you tell me, please? Did you look at the bottom of the board for any burn marks? No, I didn't, I didn't even look for any bulging capacitors, but I probably should. You know, the VRMs are underneath this heat sink, so it's not very easy to look at them, and there's, these are the ones that are most likely to go. That's what everybody's talking about. But they don't normally go unless you're overclocking and upping the voltage. They don't normally go unless you're doing that. And some ASUS boards have a BIOS flashback where you can push a button. Even without a CPU or RAM, you can update the BIOS, but this doesn't seem to support that. There's a BIOS reset. There's a BIOS reset right there. Gary, I need to go digging through stuff. Well, Stephen, if you bought it online, you, you can, you know, like Newegg and Amazon, keep track of all your receipts forever. So you can just log into your account and then do a search for X99, and then any purchase you made with X99 ever from that website will appear. On the other hand, if you bought it from like Micro Center or Retail Store, then obviously uh, you'd have to find the receipt. My concern is when I contact Asus, is whether or not they're going to ask me for the receipt. Many times they can just verify from the serial number when that serial number was issued. But if this was close to three years, then they need to know, okay, you're on the borderline. We need to see when you bought it. That's why I ask. I'm just anticipating. I already did a BIOS reset. Try switching LN2 mode off. I don't see a switch for LN2 mode. Mm -mm. If there's a switch on here for that, I don't see it. I've already discussed the switches I see and I've already moved them and they've made no difference, unfortunately. But if I'm missing something and I'm just not seeing it, please be specific as to where that switch is on the board. I 
the extreme is just giving you a summary of what we've done so far. The code zero zero is not used. Okay, well that's useful. The original board was RMA once and replacement was also RMA. The board you have is motherboard number three. Wow. Wow. Sound like Christopher Walker? Wow. But well, now I know why you sent it to me. That button on the back is a BIOS flashback, not a BIOS reset. It says reset. It says right on it. I think. Yeah, it says BIOS, and it's got like a circle around it. Because we can try flashing the BIOS if we can do that. Let's see. It's not like I can break the board. Let's take a look. A scary board it is not for the people they just want the fastest most expensive thing and they don't realize what a nightmare it is you don't want the slowest thing and you don't want the fastest thing but right in the middle you know any socket am4 any socket 1151 you're going to be happy with it for a long time socket x99 299 399 i'm sorry uh that's not a socket that's a chipset from amd AMD's TR4, Intel X99 and Xtel X299. They're nightmares. They're always, always, in my experience, every time, they're so finicky. And even when you get them working, then they stop. It's like, oh my gosh, when's this ever going to end? So that not only do you spend a lot of money, but you got all these headaches and everything's got to be just so. Again, just like a Ferrari, man, it's such high performance. You've got to get everything just right or you don't get the performance, or sometimes the car doesn't even start. So let me look online for the ASUS 99A BIOS. And let's see what the latest BIOS is. BIOS right there, 426 2018. That's pretty old. And that's a beta. I don't want that beta. So 3801 is the latest non-beta. Let's download that and move it to a flash drive. So I got a flash drive right here. We'll plug that into the streaming machine right there. And let's extract these files. To the flash drive. Go, go, gadget BIOS. Now, sometimes you have to rename the BIOS for flashback to work. Drivers and tools. Is there a BIOS renaming utility? Asus does that. Land utilities, fixed compatibility. No, BIOS utilities, B renamer, there it is. B renamer will change the file name into the correct name. Why didn't you just let me download it with the correct name, Asus? See, this is the problem with Asus. They over engineer everything and they think everybody's an engineer. I keep complaining about it and they don't listen because they're like, well, you're wrong. It's, that's what an engineer says. You're just wrong. If you're not smart enough to understand an engineer, then maybe you shouldn't be building your own computer. And I'm like, well, maybe more people would build computers if you didn't use this unnecessary engineering logic. It's like talking to a doctor and the doctor's like, oh, he's got a vertical blah, blah, blah. You're like, do you think you're talking to another doctor? Then speak English. Why would you speak to me with all these medical, Latin medical terms as though I went to medical school? Talk to me like a, you know, person talks to another person. Put it in layman's terms. If I'm another doctor, then you can talk to me that way. Just realizing I've got a lot of downloaded BIOSes in here. Let's delete those.
Okay, it's going to rename the file to x99a cap. By the way, ASUS, you could have just told me to rename the file to x99a.cap. I could have done that a lot faster than downloading a file to rename the file for me if you didn't keep the name a secret. Oh my gosh. This is, this is the stuff I don't like about ASUS. Well overcomplicated. Nobody needs it to be that complicated. First of all, you should have just named the file that to begin with in the BIOS file download. Secondly, you don't need to have a program rename it for me when you can just tell me what the name needs to be. Well, some people, they, don't, they type a lowercase and it's case sensitive. Then say as much. Yeah, but then we get support calls. So no. So instead, you think people are just going to do this and that takes less intelligence? You're wrong. It's worse. Sorry. I needed to get to that. I needed to get that out. So we got no, we've got... <laughs> We got no RAM, no CPU. I'm going to turn the power supply on. This is probably going to freak you out. See the BIOS just lit up. The, the BIOS, the flash drive just lit up. I'm going to hold the BIOS flash button in. If that's a BIOS flashback, which I don't, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but it's not a good start. For BIOS flashback to work on an ASUS, as far as I know, ASUS is the only one that does this, and it only is on the real expensive boards. You do not need a CPU or RAM, but you do need a power supply. It does need to be plugged in. It doesn't seem to be functioning. Yeah, this would be a good time to talk to JJ over at ASUS. I like JJ. He's a good guy. But ASUS as a company, and I've talked to, I've told, AJ and I have had this conversation, and I, he just, either, either I'm not being understood or he's just defending the practice. But if you're selling to engineers, then you're doing fine. But if you're selling to consumers, they really need to be more consumer friendly. Okay. Now that little light down here is flashing. You see it flashing down here? I don't see the BIOS light flashing. Let's see what happens. This is only a two gig flash drive, so it'll be FAT16 or something. Um, yeah, you, you can't be NTFS or it won't read it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Sometimes you need a different, um, you need to plug it into a special USB port. I forgot about that. Let's flip the switch off. Let's move it. I don't know which port it needs to be in. Maybe one of these light blue ones. I forgot about that. Okay, light is blinking. I should see the, the flash drive light up and it's not happening, so I still may not have it in the right socket. Let's pull the uh, keyboard and mouse dongle out. Let's move this over here. Let's do it again. It's flashing. And this does, it's very slow. Like to, to, to update your BIOS this way, literally takes like six minutes instead of a minute and 20 seconds. I think I've got to be in a special USB port. The port below the button. There's no port below the button. There is a port beside the button. I can try that one. Some Asus motherboards have a yellow port, and that's the one they want you to use for the flashback. That's why I didn't think this had flashback on it. Let's try that. So button's flashing again. I want to see that flash drive light up. That'll tell me it's reading something. Let's 
Still nothing. Button must be pressed for three seconds. Yeah, I have to hold the button in for that to start flashing. Yeah, the button's flashing on and off. And then it just goes steady and it sits there. It's not reading the flash drive at all. Daryl says he'd use the motherboard graphics. You know, that's a bad assumption to think all motherboards have graphics. When you get to this high end of a board, nobody's going to buy a board of this caliber and use onboard graphics, and therefore it's not an option. So you need to do things that are possible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to make a suggestion, that's great, but please make it a suggestion that's actually possible. BIOS light is right about the button flashes, but the BIOS just doesn't read. Is the BIOS on the root? It is. It is. When I've done this in the past, uh, the the bio, the flash the the flash drive has an LED on it, and it act it lets you know when it's being read. This is not being read. It's just sitting here. Dan says, I didn't know you could flash a BIOS with no reboot. No, no, only special motherboards, only special ones. Um, most of you will never own a board that's this expensive and this exclusive, but yes, um, on the very super, super high end and really expensive boards, it's not uncommon to see this ability to flash a BIOS. And all you need is a power supply, no CPU, no RAM. And I've done it successfully in the past because I didn't believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. But um, yeah. Yeah, this ain't working. So it doesn't really matter how long I hold the button in. It's just not working. So the only other thing I can think to do, we can certainly reformat the flash drive just to be safe. I think it's in FAT16. We could put it in FAT32 just for, just for giggles. Let's see, let's format it. Oh, it's in FAT. It's just in regular FAT. We can put it in FAT32. Do a quick format. So the only file it's going to have on it now, I'm going to copy over just the BIOS file, which is in the downloads directory. There we go. And then eject the flash drive. The correct port is the one beside the button. It says below for when case is on vertical. Okay, I appreciate that information. I've been wondering. So the one right next to it. So if this is it, it would be this one right here. Flip the switch on. Hold the button in. One, two, three. Buttons flashing. It's just not reading it. Bottom left USB 3. Well, that's a USB 2 port. It's not a USB 3 port. 
It's the green USB port. That's what I thought it would be this one right here. Let's try that. That makes the most sense to me based on past experience. So let's move it here. So we'll just switch back on. Mm -mm. This is not reading it. Manual says bottom. You guys, so everybody in the chat is telling me to use a different USB port. You all say you're reading the manual, and none of you are interpreting the manual the same way. Somebody said, so imagine what it's like, right, when everybody's an expert and everybody's trying to help, and nobody can agree on what the manual says. And yet they haven't written the manual. They're, you're all looking at this. You should be looking at the same manual. So for just giggles, I'll move it to the bottom USB 3 port nearest the audio, which is what someone just said. I don't know. They could be making it up and messing with me. But at this point, I don't care. I just, I'm willing to try anything. That's working. That is working. See it reading? It's flashing now. Or it was. Give it a minute. Look at the IO shield. That's an idea, huh? That is a good idea. No, it doesn't tell me anything. Oh yeah, USB BIOS flashback. Hmm. Is it still reading that or did it stop? I'm gonna cut it. I'll try the one above it. So you just hold the button until it flashes. You don't have to wait three seconds. Once the button flashes, you've held it long enough. And then you'll see the, um, the USB drive LED. This is why it's important for me to have flash drives that light up so I can see what's going on. This one's not lighting up at all now. So let me put it back in FAT mode. Maybe it doesn't like FAT32. It was originally formatted in just FAT, file allocation table. So we're going to cut that back off. I'm going to reformat this just in the default uh, FAT format. Let's do that real quick. Format. FAT. Start. OK. Format complete. Close. Stephen Barber's contributed five dollars. He says during flashback, both the blue light and USB light should blink at the same time. Interesting. I just want to see the. I don't care. I just want to see the flash drive <laughs> light up. Um, but okay. Let's go back to downloads. Where's my FIOS file? X99A cap. There it is, right there. Let's copy it back to the flash drive. Again, it's the only file on the flash drive, and then let's eject that. Eject. Okay, I'll we'll plug it in. This lower port right here seemed to work pretty good last time. Let's turn that on. Hold the button in. It's lit up. It read it, and then it stopped. But let's be patient for a minute and see if that lights back up. This is a U this is an old two gig USB two flash drive. It's not USB three, and it did read it. It just read something, which is the most I've seen it do.
it reading anything at all? Nope. It's definitely one of these two USB ports. On the, it, 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 certainly because those are the only two that are doing anything. But there's something it doesn't like. There's something funky happening here. I've used this same flash drive for BIOSes on other ASUS boards, including for uh, BIOS flashback. So I know there's not an incompatibility with it. But see, when I put it in that port, nothing happens. Give that a second. It's not real clear, like on the back of the IO shield. It's not real clear. Let's let it sit for a minute. I'm going to use another flash drive just to humor. Some of you are very ritualistic and don't understand technology. But sometimes technology itself can behave in bizarre ways. And so rather than tease and make fun of you for not using logic, um, when you guys go, well, you didn't do this right, it's, you can't ritualize this stuff. You have to understand why you're doing what you're doing. But I'm going to grab a USB 3 flash drive and let's see if it makes a fool out of me. I'm pretty sure, logically, um, especially based on past experience, that won't make any difference. Uh, let's take a look under my downloads. Let's grab that X99 file again. Let's copy that to the USB 3 flash drive, which is formatted in FAT32. That's good. And then let's eject that. Very good. Let's turn that off. Oh, sorry. Let's turn it off here. Let's take that. Let's plug it back in here. So that is the proper port. That's this the one closest to the digital. And anybody who says otherwise needs to put a link to it because I can just tell you that's what it is. You gotta be looking at the right motherboard, guys. The problem with this flash drive is it doesn't have much of a light on it for me to read. It does have one there somewhere. When you use uh, the flashback, ASUS, it's only one USB port that works. And it's hard to tell, but based on, based on what I'm seeing, the only one that's functioning is this bottom one closest to the audio ports. Even the top one doesn't, doesn't read it. You see the buttons flashing and nothing's happening over here. Not happening. Maybe we can go to the next set over if you want to, just to appease the ritual. It's the ritualists. I can promise you it's that bottom one right there. I just know it. And you guys have the advantage of looking at the manual and you're giving me the wrong information. I'm not looking at any manual. Right? I can just look at the board and look at how it's behaving, and I can tell the only time that this USB flash drive flashes, the only time it, 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 it all gives me any indication that it's being read is when I place it into that USB port right there. Again, 
You'd think the ASUS engineers would have put these two USB ports together. You would have thought they would have made it a different color. They didn't do any of that. Because, you know, engineers don't need their hands held like that. So again, no acknowledgement from the flash drive whatsoever. We're going to go through each one of these just to shut up the naysayers. Again, you guys have access to the manual. I could do that now if I wanted to, if you guys want to watch me read, what a riveting video that would be. But I can just tell you through the process of elimination, if you just watch the activity, this is not rocket science, it's pretty simple. Nothing's reading. Turn it back off. Wait for the light to go off. Move it to the next one. So it's frustrating when you ask somebody for help and they give you the wrong information. It's like, why did you do that? Why would you tell me the wrong information? You're not helping. That's the opposite of helping. So again, and I'm only talking to the people, obviously the people that said to use this port, those people are correct. Anybody who's telling me to use these ports or these ports, mm -mm. you can see, no. We can run through the whole test. There's still four more ports. We'll go to this one. Turn it on. Push the button. Lights blinking. Nothing. Only one USB port works for BIOS flashback. And the only USB port that is activating this flash drive is that lower one right there. on. See? Nothing. Nothing. Flash drive sits there dead. So, it's inarguable. You cannot deny what your eyes see. So by placing it in this port, flipping the switch back on and holding this button, it always blinks and turns off. That's normal. Now I hold the button in. Oh, it just blinked. There it goes. It's lit up. Now it's off. Now it's on. It blinked quick, and now it's off. So, that's it. I don't know what else to do. Uh, other than, you know, contact ASUS for an RMA, but if he's already RMA'd this three times, that doesn't really give me any confidence in shipping it back to Texas, right? Then it's just going to get shipped back to me again. And it's a free system. I'm giving it away. And every time I ship it, it's 60 to $80 every time. At some point, if I ship it 10 times, I've spent $800. The only person making any money is FedEx. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, let me give you a couple shots. I do appreciate, I know you guys are giving me wrong information, that you've got the right intent. But if you don't know for a fact, if you are not quoting the book word for word, you're not helping me. You know, if you're interpreting it, you're misinterpreting it. And what you're doing is you're, you're putting me backwards, right? So I like to include you guys as part of the process. But at the same time, I don't need people guessing. I'm asking for people to either verify the information or don't say anything so I can focus on it. But there's something weird happening here, and um, I don't have any more time left today. I've got to get right now with Mike Smith. We're going to get ready to broadcast a brand new Tech Vets episode, which will be here on the YouTube channel for the first time. And uh, it'll be similar to the interview with Eli, you know, where we, the camera switches back and forth based on who's talking. In the meantime, I do thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you're going to catch Tech Vets here in about 40 minutes or so. And a shout out for everybody who's contributed during today's uh, three hour and 20 minute marathon. Tony Wallow, Ed Novak, who just contributed $5. He says, I tuned in late. Have you tried removing the M2? Yes, everything's removed. Stephen Barber's contributed $5. And $5 again. Um, everybody keeps saying the green USB. The, there's no green USB port on this board. Um, Liam Burton has contributed $1.50. Gainsey, $95. Freeman, $666. Manuel Black, Tony Wallow, Brian Los, Paul from Mars, Fraggle Duff, Sean Baxter, Donnie Seeger, Arlund3, CCTV user, Tech Out, uh, Ramek72, Winston Ang Lu, JD Harris, Tony Wallow again, BW, Paul Hoynek, Mike Hugh, Hawaii, Reloaded714, and Reloaded714 again, Greb, Greg Vibe, Dance to My Beat, 
Nick Lord Zero, X246869, Randy Harris, Ben DeCure, Frank Decker, Swiss Skynet, Randy Ruff, Katie's Aura, James Pappas, Glyph, Nikolai Lukianov, Mark Stevens, Maruf, Citizens, Citizen Perkins, Night Owl, David Ice, JR, Stand Up 3D, Dimitri Fubar, Joseph Panariello, Guy Stevens, Johnny Craig, David Ice, Johnny Craig, uh, John, there's a John Craig and a Johnny Craig. I think that's the same guy. Magni Johansson, STS Tech, Andre Hernandez, Stephen Barber, Niles or Nils McLeod, Christoph Esch, Steve Caruso, Kevin Sears, Ronald Lewis, Jim Despazio, and the very first contribution that came in today was Tony Wallow, of course. So thank you guys so much for watching and participating in today's stream. Thanks for being cool. I appreciate that. I'm just kind of biding my time letting that run. Just It does take a long time. I just might be impatient. So I'm letting it sit just in case. In the meantime, uh, David DeVillers has contributed 99 cents and Gerard Boone, four pounds 99. And like I said, there's no CPU, there's no RAM, there's no M.2. This should work uh, with an Asus BIOS flashback. And I've done it before. I know you have to see it to believe it. But with the Asus BIOS flashback on some of the Asus super high-end boards, you can do this with all you need is a power supply. You don't need a CPU or RAM, and the lights indicate when it's ready. And it takes a good, I don't know, I feel like I want to say 10 minutes, but that seems like a really long time. It actually takes about six minutes, but it's much, much longer than a traditional BIOS update. But the fact that you can do that at all is impressive. In the meantime, I'll see if I can get with Steven Bernstein, who uh, sent the board in to me. He contributed it so that I could give it away, only to have it come back again. I'm not sure if I should thank him or kick him in the butt. <laughs> Kidding. I appreciate it very much, as does Crazy Vera, who's going to receive something. I just don't know. Might just go with that i7 that was recently contributed instead of this nightmarish X99 chipset. Thank you, guys. Yes, we'll figure it out one way or another. I'm just out of time today. Uh, I hope you guys will come back for Tech Bets later this evening. Like I said, about about a half, half an hour, 40 minutes or so. We'll get started on that. And um, to all of my friends in blue, thank you so much for keeping it civil in the chat room. As the channel grows and gets more popular, it sometimes attracts the wrong crowd. John Yasuda's contributed $2. He said it's the last port on the bottom right row. Yeah, that's where I'm at, John. You are correct. Spencer Earnhardt's contributed $2, and Tommy McDaniel's contributed $1.99. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate all of your kindness, not only to myself, but to each other, right? Because finding, finding people being mean to each other is real easy on the internet. So we don't, you know, we can create this community. It's up to us how we choose to behave. And it feels better. It just feels better to feel like you got friends, you know, all over the world. Not only between me and you, but between yourselves in the chat room, right? And you guys, you're great. So thank you so much for watching. I really do have to go, though, because I have to get everything set up for Tech Vets, which is a completely different configuration, <laughs> and I'm running out of time. So I'll see you all definitely tomorrow around the same time, and we'll figure out where I'm going from here. I'll have some information. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again very, very soon. In 40 minutes, actually. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.